I'd say it's not loose. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I thought I saw it move. Oh, we gave that one pretty good. Ooh. Uh, let me just come up chill out on the freeze button there. Good. something in this pile. You can try it, yep. Looks like some nodules interspersed in there. This one there. Hmm. Maybe not something in this pile. Yeah, no luck. Just pull you where I want you. <laughs> Cra crawling along. Well, there's a lot. It looks like there's a little. Yeah, if you move up a little. Up. Yeah. Yeah, we can. I'm gonna run we can Stay on again. the hunt here. That's fine. If you turn to your right, there is like a red creature. Bathy Pathy's there. Bathy right and down. Um, was it something that we like to catch up a little maybe? Yeah, oh. yeah. Okay. okay. That's kind of my I think the creature you saw, um, Kotachi was a sea cucumber. Was it <laughs> it looks more blobby. I saw it too, I think. Oh, there's a big, yeah. Well, that's interesting. Take time. a look at this, yeah. Yeah, let's take a zoom here. There's some other stuff growing on it, too. I mean, I want to be worth a look. Huh. I think that's a sea cucumber over there. And there's a starfish. Sea star. Looks like a very straight rock here to the right off camera right now. Looks wow. like the sponge shield wall. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Look, the sea star only has four p parts of it. It's like four legs. Okay, let's come back up. Oh, look, and there's tiny little, little polyps legs. at the end. Yeah. Polyps, yeah. Cool close up on a dead sponge. And then that really straight looking rock. Oh, and look, there's a yellow anemone there. Gotta be some loose rocks in this pile. Yeah, yeah let's <laughs> come out 20 meters or so, 10 meters. Give yourself a little time. That's better. Yeah, once you're ahead of Argus a bit, you'll have a little more time, and uh, yeah. this looks more promising. Slowly seeing a little bit more splotches of life here and there. Yep. We're gonna uh, set down right around here. These all look fairly angular. When you uh, set a little closer next time. Hard to believe these are all cemented in. Yeah. Look at those nodules. Wow. Yeah. You want to scratch the nodule field? Maybe we can get a yeah. scoop. Yep. Even they're cemented in, aren't they? Oh. Oh, they're loose. They're loose. Huh. Is the yeah. ship is the ship moving here? Nope. Uh, nope. Hold okay. Position. Um, Do we want a nodule scoop? Yeah. Yeah, we got the scoop. Why not? That rock's also loose. Get it out of the way for the scoop. Yep. That might not be the best one for Val. 
Um, well, too flat. Yeah, we can put it aside if we let's go for nodules while we're here. Uh, and uh, tilt down. That looks like a well cooked potato, huh? Keep tilting down. Show me the yeah. porch. Well done. Tilt down some more, Paul. Okay, you can tilt back up. All right, you're, you're going to have to go full vertical down there. All right. Uh, click in your auto heading, too. Okay. Gonna move you around a little, don't be alarmed. Get a quick peek there before the dust is. See what see what gets to the bottom of the bag here, maybe. Might be dusty for a while. We could probably get another scoop there. Yeah. <laughs> of course. No, <laughs> oh, don't move.
Where is this gun going? Oh, d are you happy with the... Are you going to try to get another scoop? Uh, I don't, we'll have a look here, see what, what we got. But yeah, I can scoop all day if you want. Looks like we got a fair oh, bit in there. Oh, that's pretty good, yeah. Yeah. You happy with that, or you want to go for another? Yeah, one? we wanted a dozen or so, I think, uh, but I think we probably got it. Um, it's up to you if you want to try for one more scoop yeah, before we start. Yeah, for one more. Yeah. I'll let it clear for a minute. Can tilt down a little, Paul? Yeah, bit, bit crusts. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Good, good. some bigger rocks in there. Yeah. I'll we'll go up here where they can see what we're doing. Oh, freeze button fail. Yeah, there's sort of a little ledge in the middle or uh, blocking your path a little bit. Yeah. Oh. I've got it where I want it. Yeah. You want to zoom in there a bit, Jeff? Yeah, that's good, thanks. Quite good at Yeah. This, that that rock's kind of in the way. If you think you have a dozen or so, I think that's fine. Got one in the BBC right now. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> There's another little cluster there, but I can't tell if something's blocking it. Yeah, it might be able to reach there. Flexible handle. Definitely got a few there. Yeah. What do you think? Oh yeah, pretty happy with that. Nice, nice job. All right, I think we want it in the uh, starboard bio uh, aft right. front. There's F available. Yeah. Kay. Yeah, put it in F, and uh, if we need to grab another rock and put it on top, we might be able to do that. Coming out with the box. Right there. Looks like there's a bathy pathy trying to creep into our bio box. 
So that yeah, this is going to go to. Uh, you want to get a picture of it first? Oh yes. Uh, of the uh, sample. Just yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, zoom in on the rebel field there if you want. We're swinging around. Find, yeah, it's find, zoom. find something to look at. Can you uh, punch the sample salvo for me? Oh wait, I can do it. Never mind. I've got the button. job team. Not a very nice handle on that thing. Well, it was our second string. <laughs> so do you still have a rock on the porch? Yeah, I do. Oh, do you like me to do something with it? While you're, can you can you poke at those guys to see if they're loose? Uh, sorry, I wasn't looking. Up to the right there. Yeah, kind of. Pen right for me. This one, but that, this one's not too different from the, the ones on the porch, maybe. Yeah, yeah that one will go. That one looks a little better. Another rock for Val? Yes. Oh, that looks like a nice one there. Yeah. It's got the angle and the... Okay, pan left. That's good. Good. Put it out. Right. Zoom in for us, Jeff. Please. Might go in with the net or not. <laughs> Do you think it'll fit in the one of the smaller starboard bio compartments? Uh, I'll be close. Put it in there just the right way. I think it'll fit with the net. Okay, yeah. I'll open the boxes. Yeah, either know. either one. Did you get your uh, picture of it? Did you? I did. Okay, box coming back out. Right. There. Where are we going with this one? You well, I don't want it to jam the drawer, so if you think it'll go with the net, I think that's perfect. But yeah, open a little more, Paul. Yeah. If not, I don't want to. Uh, Can you give me the other camera back, too? Yeah. Yeah, it should yeah, go in, right? Room. So that's F again, right? Sorry, I just had to come away while I come down on the shoulder there. 
Yeah, I don't know. Nice. We don't need to be taking any water samples with these? No. Okay. Ready for a ship move? I think so. Yeah. Hmm. Bridge, this is Nev. You can ditch the one on your porch if you want. Or if Four zero meters matter. at zero six zero, please. Yeah, we still do have that one on the uh, ballast. Yeah. <laughs> See how long it stays there. Was that with the the F? It was with F, yeah. All right. Should be able to uh, ease off on your Z bias now. Had it up at 30, down to 20 or so, maybe. So we're still making our way to waypoint two. Still a couple hundred meters away, or? Yeah. I think about 300. Okay. Yep, 330. Looks like a little bit of coral on that rock. And oh, yeah. Me right here. Some life on me. All right. On this side there. Um. Oh, yeah. Looks like Coritogorgia, maybe. Can we take a look at these? Coritogorgia. Yeah, can we get a zoom here, Joe? Kanaho? Oh, no. Eridigorgia. Eridigorgia? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crinoid there. Mm, crinoid. Pretty small. Spiraling Kaiser Gorgia there. Looks like it might have been cut or something. I think there were two more up here. Oh, oh nice. Right. Clever, you can now look right down the spiral for the zoom. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I don't know why that shot. It's a thing, Paul. It's a legit thing. <laughs> cool. Maybe the top one, because it's in the, got black in the background. Total BBC shot. swaying in the wind and I lost the alignment with that center. You can come closer, you're miles away. Touch with the porch there on the bubble cap. Yeah. So you want forward more than down because you're touching vertical rock, right? Potentially a Patty Pathy's in the background there. Yeah, you're wedged in there good now. All right, let's zoom. Yeah, that's a great can, shot. Uh, you were right, Dan. Yeah. Give a little more forward, Paul. And it'll stable up. Alright, can we zoom on the uh, unbranched white colony, please? Over here, I believe. These? Hello. Yeah, I think so. Alright, we're doing a little bit of zoom and a little bit of watch change. Yeah, so you'll hear some there. voices change over a little bit. Thank you, and Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Can we uh, zoom in here? 8 to 12, out. Yeah, 
look like some unbranched bamboos here, potentially. And with that, I'm out of here for the watch change. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We're going to switch out here. Hang on a second. Oh. Do we need more of a zoom? I think we've got a watch change going on. Switching right monitor over to Hercules. All right, so I think this is the uh, densest population that we have seen so far <laughs> on this dive. <laughs> yeah, Chris, I, I see that. Uh, I see that larger thing too. I'll see if we can uh, once once we're all uh, settled in here, we'll see if we can make a move over there and uh, get a closer look at it. Does look like either a Colophagus or a Bolosoma. Yeah, we saw one of those a little Ooh. bit earlier too. Yeah, we'll have to see what the attachment points are. Yeah. <coughs> this is a nice view for a watch change. I'm really enjoying this. Let's see. So we are still at 3,400 so, and change meters. What is the name of this watch? This watch? The Nocturnals. <laughs> the Nocturnals. <laughs> Even when it's nude. Hello there, Nocturnals. So for those of you who might be just joining us, uh, we are very, very deep down today on uh, Nootka Seamount, and uh, that's a little bit south of Argonaut where we were driving yesterday, and we are, let's see how deep we are, we are about 3492, 3408, sorry, uh, meters down, and we are in the land of very thick manganese crusts today. Back row, we're uh, getting settled up here. Do you guys want to go over the game plan? Are we just going to continue, or do you want to stay around here for a minute? Um, I think we were interested in sticking here for a minute and zooming on uh, uh, some of the animals we ha we're seeing here. And then uh, afterward, yeah, right where Justin <laughs> telestrated, um, there's a, a large sponge or something that we would be interested in uh, getting a closer look at. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Thanks. Uh, go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. Do you want it tighter, than, or do you guys want it far? Um, we're consulting with our uh, onshore team. Uh, hang on just a second, sorry. Yeah, no sure thing. Go in tight. Uh, yes, please. Can we go in tighter on the uh, the white stock? Yeah, sure. I'll get you guys a little bit more squared up. Thank you. Oh, wow. 
Mm. It's like it has little little beads at the end of the polyps. It's definitely an unusual shape to the end of those tentacles, huh? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> cool. They all seem to be on one side. And Chris also asks for uh, the smaller stalks to the right sure when, when we get a moment. Mm -hmm. Sure thing. Yeah, come on, please. There's a, uh, he's putting out there that potentially Bathagorgia. Go ahead and push on in there, please. I'm gonna turn on the porch for this one, for it. Go ahead. Yep. Is that good there? Do you guys want it centered in more zoom? Uh, um, maybe a touch more? Yeah. Let me see if I can get the centered. I might just blow past it. Ugh. It's panning. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's so hard to count the arms. One, two, three, four. Oh, I got it centered. It's an nice. octocoral of some kind. <laughs> nice view. Beautiful yeah. shot. All right, it looks like we're going to get something from Chris Kelly here. Yeah, it looks like we have two there different two, ones. There are two, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those that C-Pen you were pointing out earlier, Justin. Well, I don't, th do they attach to, I don't think they attach to rocks. I don't know sediment. anything about C-Pens. <laughs> All right, go ahead and come wide, please. But right. I, and you guys you want know. to look at this one down here? The smaller one on the right. Smaller I think one. they're looking at the black coral. All right, go ahead and push on in there, please. Yep. I'm gonna do a small bump to the right. Watch your eyes. It looks like Bath of Bathies now. Bath of Gorgia, he said. No. It's a slightly different color than the ones we were seeing yesterday. Uh, less red in it. I feel like it's a bath of pathies. Okay. Full Chris, wide, Chris put in some uh, ideas for those other ones we're looking at too in the science chat, Leela. Oh, bath of Gorgia for the cities above this one. Okay. All right. Um, anything else that we wanted to look at here? Do you want this guy here? Yeah, maybe quick on the possibly juvenile Chris Gorgia. Right, go ahead and push on in there, please. What gives the black coral its color? Great question. Why are the skeletons black? Huh. I don't know. Are they still calcium with something else in them, or is it something else altogether? They it's must still be calcium based. Are we drifting? I know, yeah. Chris. I remember in 2018, Chris was explaining this to us, but I cannot dredge it yeah, from my point. mind. Uh, can we get a little more zoom? Do we have any left? No, that's as far as we can go. Okay, no worries. Thank you. We changed the heading. Hi, Reg. Hi. Pull it, please. Thank you. All right. I'm going to push out ahead here, guys. Yeah, I think we're ready to move. And then you guys want the yeah. sponge? I think it's on our... It's kind of that way over there somewhere. Yeah. Reg. <coughs> oh, yeah. Asako and Chris were pointing out there was a solitary hydroid, hydrozoan, uh, that we were. That was kind of next to the last coral we were zoomed in on. It was a very pretty one. I was sitting with Val in the lounge watching the earlier watch dive and as some of those uh, samples were collected and you were telling me the thickest crust that you had ever seen was how thick, Val? Um, almost as thick as what we're seeing on this dive, but maybe a couple, couple of inches and it was some of that kind of poorly consolidated manganese crust that once you get it on board and it starts drying out, it just kind of crumbles on you. This stuff looks uh, much more um, consolidated, much more uh, sturdy. So this is, uh, these are some pretty chunky crusts. 
We were seeing about, um, according to the laser, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 10 centimeter crust uh, near where we uh, uh, first landed, where we Go could see a section of the please. crust that had uh, broken off. So it's some... Um, Can come partial wide, please? It's a uh, challenging place uh, as far as locating uh, samples that we're able to grab for uh, geological work, but um, it means we've been doing a lot of poking around so far, but we've been finding some things. Just takes a little patience. That is a beautiful sponge. Yeah. So yeah, Chris is saying it's very, very old Caliphacus. But it's a I'm different species than the really tall one that we saw on past dives. Forward, please. All right, guys, I'm going to get caught up. There's a little bit of an Argus swing there. So All right. Sounds good. Let's do it. Raj. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have the same long stalks that we were doing our detective work on last, last dive. OK, so black rolls don't have calcium carbonate skeletons. They're skeletons, which are kind of browny are made of layers of chitin and proteins. Oh, that's right. Right. Interesting. I remember the proteins part, but I'm, OK, now I'll try to have that stick in my head this time. All right, what do we have here? What kind of sponge? Maybe another colophagus? Seems like they're a little more present down here. Chitin is the same thing that insects, uh, exoskeletons are made of. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Yeah, Chris is saying it's the same same one that we saw earlier, same Caliphagus species. <clears throat> when you get out ahead, um, may I use bubble? Go ahead and use bubble now if you'd like. Well, I'm not ready, so. <laughs> <laughs> So one of his thoughts is it may be oxidiscus, but not sure. Oh, there's a, what is that right there? Oh, sea cucumber? Sea cucumber, yeah. Is it? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. It's so brown. Maybe it's just the light. Mm. All right, I'll get my head here. <coughs> Those really deep purple uh, sea cucumbers that we saw earlier on the dive were really, really cool. So Christopher, how are we spending our Earth Day today? <laughs> uh, we are spending our Earth Day, uh, well, I've been spending my Earth Day doing interactions I've had four uh, this morning. Talked to some students in uh, Syracuse, New York. Okay, so it will be in 060. 060, Raj. 060. I'm very excited. First graders, Leela and I talked to them. They showed us their homemade boats that they, they made so out of recycling. Oh, how cool Cute. is that? It was the Raj, this is Nav. They told Leela they the ship on bearing <laughs> 060, 50 meters. Yeah, we passed a sea star just a second ago. It kind of looked like the Brasingid ones, but I couldn't. And I talked to uh, my own students, uh, my sixth and eighth graders, and they had zero questions for me. <laughs> oh, boy. So, and then I talked to the fourth graders right down the hall from them after that, and they had lots of amazing questions. That was pretty exciting. And then uh, Ashton and I got to talk to uh, Sea Perch Club, which Sea Perch is a uh, make your own ROV out of PVC pipe uh, program. And I, I coach a Sea Perch team at home. Oh, cool. And you get to talk to them. Um, awesome. They had a lot of, they asked all the like, what's the coolest thing you've seen? What's the scariest thing you've seen? What's mm -hmm. the ugliest thing you've seen? Love that. <laughs> but fortunately, we have lots of really good pictures. And uh, I was able to answer all of them with an image, pretty much. 
Go ahead and, go ahead and do a quick zoom here, please. That's good. Thanks. Got some associates poking out. See, like this is a sponge that I would say is huge, but it's only like 20 centimeters wide. <laughs> We've been spoiled by the other dives. It's also just so hard to tell. Like I'd say that was a it's pretty sizable. meter tall. Pull away, please. Yeah, I'm surprised how many sponges we're seeing down not. here. And a lot of the uh, the trackways on top of the crust too. We haven't quite located that's another sea cucumber there, I think. Oh, yeah. That's a shrimp. Shrimp? That's a shrimp. Yeah. Oh, oh wow, my, see, like, my, that's the scale. My scale is all messed I up. I know, here. my <laughs> scale is way off, too. Um, do we want to try a push core on this uh, pile of sediment? Uh, Would that be worth it or no? I'm wondering if it's just, yeah, how it's much It's just like is. a surface layer. It looks like it might be. Okay. And if that is, it won't really core. Yeah, if it's only a few centimeters, yeah, we won't bother. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of outcropping here. Okay. Yeah. I got to tag along with Shelby on three of her interactions with some first graders and some fifth graders. Oh, it's definitely a lot of fun. Um, Beth says a push core would be good. Do we want to poke it and just see how deep it is? Let's poke it. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be a it. very pokey dive, I think. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, but yeah, if we look at Atalanta, we can see that there's yeah. it's probably just a, a blanket of sediment. I think mm. you're right. And with stuff hard. Stiff stuff on top might fall through. We're gonna go ahead and stop the ship, please. Bridge, this is not hold position, please. Okay, you wanna poke the ground? A full rack deck. Yeah. Poke in the ground. Raj. Kind of reminds me of a ski slope. Yeah, kinda. Um. And hold off here and come on down. Happy to report that uh, the onshore geology team is uh, pretty happy with uh, the igneous rock textures we've been seeing. So it's been a pretty exciting uh, cruise for the geology uh, portions of it. And uh, I know that isn't necessarily uh, you know, the first thing everybody thinks mm -hmm. of on some of these dives with the spectacular biology, but um, yeah, we've been in all aspects of this cruise, just having a great right. time. See how far do you go? Yeah, you that's pretty you. shallow. Yeah, Raj. Let me try that one more time. Oops, sorry. So <laughs> well, that's a good indicator for us. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like as deep as half the fingertips. Okay. Yeah, that may not behave well with the uh, with the push cores. No, it'll be really shallow and yeah. therefore might not. We we need a little more depth to get the push cores to uh, retain sample. So. Yeah, I think that's. Do you want one more? Or? Yeah, let's let's do it up there where it's clean. There we ran next. I think we have long fingers now. Oh. That's about as deep as... Yeah, that's because that pushes the vehicle up. Mm -hmm. To hold up the fingers. Yeah, so it's not yeah. enough to get a good plug on it. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for checking. Yeah. No problem. Yep. Beth says, happy Earth Day. Thank you. We're celebrating it. In addition to all these wonderful ship-to-shore interactions, we're celebrating it by going, I think, on our deepest dive yes. of this expedition yeah. uh, on Nuka Seamount. Started, we started at 3,552 meters. Four mega. Oh, nice. Yep, so uh, and starting at that depth means that um, folks who have been following this expedition will notice that uh, things look very different on this dive. So we're, we're below where um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of animals tend to Can hang out. The next bit, um, okay. So Same bearing will be 060. Roger. Bridge, this is Nav. Can we make a move on bearing 060, 50 meters, please? Yes. 
In back row, I want to change my heading around a bit just to wash off all the sediment. So, it's a car wash. You can kind of see it coming <laughs> out of my starboard bio box there. Please. Don't, don't look too closely. <laughs> yeah. oh, look at the Atalanta wow. view. Yeah. <laughs> the Chrysogorgia there didn't get a great. I'll stop looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we aren't seeing uh, the same population density that we have on uh, previous dives because we're uh, uh, about a thousand meters lower than uh, most of our, than the range most of our dives have started in, give or take a couple hundred meters and. Uh, one thing we also noticed right off is that the manganese crusts uh, that have deposited on the rocks around here are much, much thicker, which is um, making sampling interesting too, because um, the rocks are crustier and thus larger. Um, we were estimating uh, the manganese crusts at around 10 centimeters here, which is the uh, biggest I've seen. and. Uh, it makes it a little bit harder for us to figure out what exactly we're grabbing when we do find loose rock. And not all of the rock that looks loose is actually loose. A lot of it is um, Go ahead and put you on in, crusted please. over and stuck. So, um, yeah, that's, that's part cool. of the fun with today's dive is yeah. figuring out what is and isn't um, something that we're actually able to grab. There is a lot going on with this sponge. Chris, Chris is calling it a sacrocalyx. Uh, but you can see the crinoid on the stock. There's barnacles, and um, it's coated with the hydrozoans. Hydrozoans? Is, that, is, that, right? is that right, Christopher? I don't know. I'm not the expert on this one. Uh, <laughs> who wants to weigh in and oh, tell us we're wrong or right? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah, hydrozoans. So again, it just goes to show you how important these sponges are and the uh, corals as well for providing just structure, habitat for a lot of other organisms to get up into that feeding zone. Are you still actively looking for rocks, Val? Um, not for a little while. Okay. Hey, is uh, that? We got one right about the time we were eating lunch. Okay. So uh, once we get up a little bit higher, I'm going to start uh, looking again. Are those one of your pillow basalt fractures there? Oh, I think so. Yeah. It's hard to see because it's so crusted over. It looks like it has a little bit of that radial pattern. It's like I that think. good, like, sourdough crust, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. It's got a nodule field around it, too. Hmm. Oh, there's a little, um, is that a little cup coral there or something else? Uh, is that a crinoid? Um, I don't know. My scale is just blown so yeah. far. Yeah, I think it's like or the solitary hydrozoan. Yeah, I think so oh, maybe that's it. <coughs> Go ahead and push on in there, please. Yeah, I think the manganese crust is throwing us a oh, little no, no, bit. No. Oh, yeah. No idea. Oh, okay. Definitely not a crinoid. That is so crusty. Look at that rock. Yeah. So Val, what's your hunch about what makes this seamount different than Come the uh, wide, other ones we've seen? That's good. Um, so the reason it looks so different is uh, not necessarily much to do with the seamount itself, but um, the depth that we're diving at. Hmm. So um, we're further down the seamount, um, which means there's very, uh, a very high probability that we're looking at um, right, rocks cool, that erupted please. earlier, so much, much older rocks. Uh, further down in the seamount because, um, yeah, uh, you get young, presumably younger rocks the further up you go. Um, <coughs> and uh, this just means that they've had more time on the seafloor and more time uh, for manganese crusts to build up on them. That's a cool Atlanta shot. But also uh, seeing manganese crusts this thick is a good sign that, uh, a very good sign that these mm -hmm. uh, at least this volcano is in the age range that uh, we've been thinking Crinoid. Uh, this this chain may be. We had a nice little, I think that was a small crinoid just hanging out. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh, no, that's fine. We're, we are looking at some different animals today, too. So please, uh, if you see something, uh, and I'm talking about rocks, tell me to stop talking about rocks. <laughs> Chris, are you Never. saying, Chris is saying <coughs> Therian. 
Is that for that Some kind of small anemone? polypy thing we're looking so. at? Oh, I'll have to look that up. Yeah, so what we're looking at here are um, what appear to be some uh, uh, pillow, uh, pillow basalts uh, stacked up and since have been crusted over and uh, had some uh, sediment build up Thank you. between sure. them. It's pretty classic, uh, uh, pretty classic uh, seamount lava morphology that we see uh, in a number of places. What is next to the sea cucumber there? Is that a dead stalk? Looks like it. Kind of yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. yeah. This is such a amazing Gadgets color. Gadgets perspective. <laughs> wow. It's a weird hat. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Pull away, please. There's another one. Those sea cucumbers. So it's always been a little bit of a surprise to cut these samples open just because you never know exactly what you're you're going to get in these rocks. Like um, some of them you just pick up and you know it's going to be just this good rock. You know, it, it, it just kind of, you can just kind of tell it's, it's uh, just like extra dense or solid. Um, and uh, yeah, it's got uh, some of these just have a just beautiful mineralogy to them that uh, tell us that geochemically it's it's going to give us um, it's going to give us some really interesting uh, high quality data. Look at this one. And uh, oh my goodness, that's huge. Yeah. Wow. Whoa, is that relicanthus? Go ahead and push on in there, please, partial. Beautiful. Yeah. Do you want to turn the lasers off there, Kylie? Some you of the tentacles it. are helical on that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. It is. What are, are these smaller threads in here also? Yeah. Like inter, inner tentacles? The like oral or? tentacles, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yes, relicanthus. I don't see any indication of current down here. So we've yeah. seen these uh, kind of blowing in the current uh, at different depths. I'm going to come partial right there, please. I kind of want to sit down in front of this guy and just And on the back the is okay. actinostol. What are those actinostolids? The anemones on the anemones back. Anemones up top. Let me double check that. Cool. Again, in my mind, this is huge, but it could be like it looks pretty 10 centimeters big. across. Again there, please? That's good. Yeah, look at those inner tentacles. That's really cool it is strange that it has these little helical shapes here yeah trying to catch everything it can yeah oh okay now chris is saying maybe not relicanthus because of the small oral tentacles mm. go ahead and push on there a bit more please interesting So it's cool. Magical. Super cool. Yeah. All right, go ahead and come light slow. Thanks. So are they, are the tentacles, like, what uh, is inside them? Like, a, is it like a, like a stiff jelly sort of thing, like a pyrosome, or is it like, um, just more liquidy, or is Come it? If you'd like, there, Solomon. Continue. What is do you there? Think? Um, we'll be going to zero five five. Zero just five five, Raj. Pressure. This is now. Hey, Leo. There's a another move bearing zero five five fifty meters. The, mm -hmm. the file o one four. Under uh, Sariantharia looks a lot like that. What we were just looking at. Oh yeah. Which, which was uh, captured or the imaged in the Northwesterns. Chris is verifying too. 
very I cool shot from the back of the of the an enemy. Oh yeah. You can yeah. say that there's, again. There's just a lot going on on these yeah. little oh, yeah. section. Yeah. These these little these little bits and pieces of uh, these, these little micro communities. When was that, Justin? Oh, um, uh, if you go to image 014 under the under. Um, oh, this one, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, some kind of Sarianth area question mark. Because that looks like it has the oral tentacles too. stalks too so this is a sponge area again for sure how long do you think it would take those stalks to decompose for any sponge i suppose it's like a really good question probably a really long time down here although i don't know like depending on the amount of microbial activity mm -hmm. this is cool these are all those warm trails again yeah do you want to go ahead and push in a little bit there, please? That should be good. Thanks. So remind me what the previous watch was thinking about these. Did anybody catch that? No. Uh, mm -mm. They were speculating some sort of a mollusk, right? Yeah, Ry Ryan mentioned a little bit. I just probably should have sat and talked to him a little longer. I'm sort of fascinated by these tiny little brittle stars we're seeing. Just incredibly delicate little things. Is oh, that goodness. white shell one of them? Yeah, Where the little guy that we we're in the. No, uh, in the I, well, I was saying a snail actually um, up and to the right, but it's kind of tiny now. Oh, I missed Do it. Do you mean right there? Yeah. <laughs> the eagle right, eye just over here. <laughs> I'm okay. good for a few things. Good. Maybe. Oh. It's a little limpet, I think. Maybe. That'd be a lot of travel for that yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah. Sure would, but I would put it past it though. I think that uh, does that look like one that they saw really oh, early in the dive? I'm Except not sure. smaller. The other one looked bigger. Although again, I, th I feel like my scale is just not up to par here. Yeah, it's a little different um, here. They're saying maybe made by, or Chris is saying maybe made by an aplacophorin. Go ahead, push on in again. Which please. is basically sort of like the chitons, but without the without the placophores, without the like the shell layers on their back. So they yeah. just sort of have a footy layer. So what's up above the the white mollusk? Yeah. Or looks like a limp area. Right? Yeah, it looks like the same hundreds. thing, but different, huh. but dead or something. Okay. Uh, Deep sea Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, please. It's a good description. Sometimes their their shells um, change color depending on what they've been eating. Oh. I know in the intertidal zone, a lot of times um, we'll see like a, a white shell, and then all of a sudden there's a spot where it changes color because it was moved to a different environment. And That's cool. So it'll be yeah. like all white, and then it'll be just pointing. Kind of brown. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Some of these pillow basalts are a little confusing morphologically because they almost look like they're anastomosing, but there's enough sediment that it's hard to say for sure. Do we have a quick zoom on that? That actually looks different, like hylostylus or something. Yeah, let's get a closer look at that if we, if we can. It, it looks like it's stalked. Yeah, but it looks like a round little cup. Oh yeah, I thought it w the opening was facing us, but it's facing up. It has a different shape than Hylostylus, but it's sort of similar. I got a pigeon in there, please. QT. Do a swipe above here. Let's check it out. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Go ahead and push on in there again, please, a bit more. Amphidicella, stock duplectelid. Thank you. Yeah, sure thing. 
people like this. I don't think oh, I've yeah. seen such open sediment areas on our watches yet. If you look in the uh, Atlanta cam. Yeah, we're in a bit of a flatter area and pretty far down, so we're probably seeing a lot of uh, distal, like distal transport from way further up the seamount. It's like amazingly clear today. Mm. That too. So yeah, very kind of sluggish water flow, sedimentation conditions. You know, those look kind of like antlion pits. Wow, it's cool yeah, to see Herc's nice porch. Oh, yeah. Just like the outline of Herc's shadow really yeah. distinctly. Oh, uh, cool, yeah. Look at all the trail here, too. Looks like the same pattern as those oh, mollusks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Val, what did you call those pits? Uh, antlion pits. Except much larger. Good, and push on there a little bit. It's a please. type of uh, That's good. predatory insect that kind of digs down into, uh, like, uh, fine sandy environments or uh, like silt you can see these little circular depressions um they're pretty small they're like half a centimeter at largest maybe oh and goodness. they um they're they literally do hunt down ants so an ant stumbles into the the pit and uh, uh sediments are at the angle of repose so it's they're, they're loose it's really hard for the ant to climb back out and uh, the ant lion gets it that way hmm. so um, another sea cucumber oh yeah, yeah. Different than we've seen before. Oh, yeah. Sea pen maybe over here. So, yeah, I don't know if those are pits for something predatory or just something where somebody's burrowing. Yeah, there's you know, a lot more of them. to say. Yeah, they're... All over the place. Yeah. Fairly abundant. So, yeah, no idea what that might be, but it's reminiscent of some of those uh, Good little things like I used please. to see growing up as a kid. Yeah. I'll have to look that up. I've never lived somewhere that had those. Yeah, I know they're at least in the upper Midwest, but I'll bet they're pretty common mm. around the U.S. What are you? Is that a, oh, brittle, a brittle star, star on that? All yeah. the shadows. I think so. Come a little wide there, please. We'll get a little bit better square up. You guys want a closer shot? I think they saw one of these earlier on the earlier watch. I think, I think so. Yeah. But I don't remember what it was identified as. Go ahead and push on it again, please. Go on. There's one of those little jellies. Oh, Just yeah. Cruising along. Unless it's a sea dandelion. <laughs> so if you're just joining us, we are um, diving extra deep today. We're at, we started at uh, 3,550 meters, and we are moving up the uh, Nootka Seamount in the Lilikalani Ridge on uh, the east moving. side, yes, east please. fork. Bridget, this is enough. Another move, 055, 50 meters. Our scientists ashore are saying um, it's a sea pen, but not sure which one yet. We've seen several more since we've been floating through. It would be really interesting to cut some of these rocks open because with uh, how thick these manganese crusts are, it's really it's really tricky to get an idea of the morphology. Yep. Usually we can see through the crusts enough uh, to get a pretty good idea of what we're grabbing. If it's like a pillow fragment or a piece of a flow um, or a hyaloclastite sometimes. Uh, this one, yeah. Well, Val's been it's a little grab bag. I'm excited. Val has been sacrificing her sleep time to process all the samples so that we will be ready to do some cutting this evening. So we can report back tomorrow, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably, especially, you know, depending on uh, 
how this dive goes and uh, what we decide the evening plans will be. I don't cut after uh, I, don't, I don't cut after dark though for safety reasons. So probably probably tomorrow we'll know more. Yeah. This dive is planned for 16 hours. We're about four and a half hours in. About half of those 16 are transit to and from the seafloor. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Is that another black coral way down in the bottom yeah, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Looks it. Like it. And also in closer to us. Planning to transit about 1.4 kilometers to our final waypoint. Yep. Shorter dive today, longer transits. We're not going to be going to the top of this seamount. Uh, we're going to a sort of a local summit, a smaller summit. So I'm trying to decide if these rocks are loose or not, just kind of keeping an eye on things. And it's actually been pretty difficult so far on this dive. Stuff that looks loose to all of us, we uh, set the ROV down and poke at it, and it doesn't budge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sad. Brad, are you able to put the high pack up on on three? So you can see where we are? Uh, the high pack screen actually has a window over it right now. Oh, okay. uh, but I could do it later if it's different. All right. Um, I think that's the high, high pack plan. Yeah. I high think high pack survey. survey is fine. Because high pack th survey is the one that Suleiman is using. Let me see. The address that I've been using for it is that. But let me see if I have another route to it. What uh, what designation is it when you're trying to go to it? Survey. Okay. Source PC. Uh, just try, just try. Uh, the PC one is the one that I always use for it, but it's the one that's covered up right now. Okay, try two. I'll just go through them. We can also, I, like, we can also assign high pack to the source PC if you want. Okay, are you gonna come up on the delta we bit? Yeah, you got it. Looks like some black yeah, source holes. PC is just like a, a computer that you can pull up something, and pull so up the high pack view on. Right. So the addresses that I have right now um, don't have an option for just that. But if there's a way to route it to uh, something that I could hit, then I'd love to hit it. Yeah, um, I can maybe do that on a computer. I see what you're saying. So Val, we have someone asking about the columnar pieces that you collected. Uh, when you cut them, what did you find? Um, it, those are really interesting. Uh, a lot of them look uh, texturally and uh, potentially, you know, just looking at color, uh, mineralogy, um, mineral proportions. Um, they they seem like they're likely to be genetically related to each other. It's just uh. One of the interesting things is that there is a, uh, uh, they're capturing a variation in how, uh, how much uh, mineral growth and like uh, uh, mineral abundance, like phenocryst assemblage uh, has, has uh, grown in. So possibly a little bit of a crystallization sequence that we've captured with those. And, um, you know, it's, it's really hard to tell uh, uh, sometimes just based on hand texture uh, with with these, but they do um, they they are consistent with uh, what we might expect in a uh, dike setting. So um, looks like we got a decent uh, sampling of uh, what appears to be intrusive rock. So um, we need to uh, finalize it, of course, um, back at the labs. But um, yeah. They're also uh, very, very avicicular. One of them was more avicicular, which was pretty interesting too. And I was doing a little digging last night in the literature, and uh, uh, you do get uh, some dikes in ocean islands uh, that are um, quite vesicular. Uh, most of the examples that I found were uh, 
subaerial or stuff that's above uh, sea level. So it's hard to analog that directly to uh, these submarine examples. But um, yeah, it looks like uh, what I'm finding is pretty consistent with the subaerial uh, 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 studies that have been done. So um, yeah, potentially some uh, uh, interesting petrological uh, study to do on those. One of our viewers says they want to see a shark. <laughs> <laughs> so do we. <laughs> um, we actually got to see a whale shark yesterday uh, at the surface, which was really exciting. That was made my day. It's uh, there's some pictures posted on Instagram, isn't there? Aren't there? Yes, of the whale shark. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I believe that there's going to be a little um, video clip put together and posted at some point. Shh. Yeah. yeah, check out the Nautilus Instagram story. It should still be up there, maybe. Bridget, this is enough. Another move, same step, please. One of the crew put a GoPro camera on a pole and kind of improvised a camera boom and I think got some footage. So hopefully once that gets processed, we'll have something in video form. Yeah, some of that's an Instagram story as well. Yeah. And that was Steve, who's a filmmaker, so it was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> he got some very nice shots. Now he's, he's edited, editing them as well. Yeah, so I'm seeing more of these sedimented areas with the, uh, the nodule, little localized nodule fields again. Uh, they scooped some of those uh, during lunch or oh, before ship that. change. So we'll see what comes up with those. Any thoughts as to why those might form in that sort of little shelf? I think like it is. Mm. I don't know much about like the nucleation mechanism, but maybe that's just an area where things are particularly calm. I don't know. So it can just kind of precipitate out very easily without getting moved around. And that would be my best guess, but I don't know for sure. Um, the, the crusts also have to nucleate on something too, so that's why they're commonly uh, surrounding rocks or other, other pieces of things. Yes. Does that look like old sponge down there, or is that just my Stocked eye? crinoid? Oh yeah. Oh no, no it looks it's not like stocked. old sponge. You're right, yeah, good eyes, Jess. Oh, hang on one moment. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. That's good. Yeah, it's on a coal oh, wow. or a sea pen. It's some that old same sea pen. Some sponge. Wow. All right. So you got some. Hang on, I'm getting a question from the uh, studio. Sure. Uh, studio, can you ask that again, please? Chris would like to look at the thing to the right that is plate-like. I was just noticing this is a really weird shape too. I'm going to come a little wider, the please. So plate-like. Probably this guy over here, right? right? Do you mean this, okay. Chris, right here? Um, yes, I need to talk to studio. Roger. Sorry, pilots will have more info in just a second. Okay, no problem. Get okay, they're, they're getting me please. over SPL, so. Um, yeah, I, I just haven't quite caught their questions yet. Yeah, he's talking about this right here. If we can take a look. Okay. Yeah, we can get a. It looks look like there's that. a broken piece of it here too. Yeah. Is that? Is, Val, do you see this? I think. Is that abiotic? <laughs> mm, I don't know. It looks biogenic to me, but potentially. Encrusted sponge is yeah. what he yeah. says. That would be. That would be an excellent hypothesis. Could and push on in a bit more there, please. And you, this looks like what we collected back in the day. Huh. And Justin, you, you pointed out the, what looks like it could have been more of this uh, behind the crinoid, yeah? Yeah, it, yeah. it had a very similar shape. Yeah, good point. Yeah, so this 
Yeah, this is uh, a little clue as to how long it takes for some of these uh, uh, biogenic structures to break down. Yeah. Wow. All right, cool. We're seeing uh, appreciable manganese accumulation. That's been down here for, what, you think maybe thousands of years minimum? Oh, you see the rest of it there? Yeah, yeah. here and then there yeah. and then there. Wow. Oh, wow. That's a lot of dead sponge. That's incredible. Oh, you see that too. Chris is saying that that crin crinoid we were looking at is a paratelecrinus conifer. And that wow. the tips of the arms were naked, which is one of the identifying factors. Oh. I should have. I wish I had read that before we left. That's a really, <laughs> really white anemone. An yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm going to get out of the print case. So, Val, do you think, do you think that the encrusting of a dead sponge will like preserve it or make it eventually yeah will it preserve it like i mean it's dead but i guess i'm wondering like we were talking about it like decaying and w will it take longer if it's covered in a crust yeah right i think it would i imagine yeah. it would yeah because it makes uh anything that's susceptible to being broken down by whatever process down here it makes that um less accessible there like it, it uh, gets rid of some of that surface area so it just slows it down and yeah. yeah I guess it could effectively just like mummify it at some point cool. so um, Lila you said you collected one of these like last time you guys were here yeah and it was uh, I mean it was hard to see if there was any sponge still inside of it but it was yeah. like a eupuctelid sponge in shape and it had yeah. little little holes and everything but it was covered in manganese crust I was just wondering if um if you would treat it like a rock sample and take a cross section of it. Oh, it just came up like on the side of something. Oh. It wasn't intentional. Oh, but okay. if but if we were to if we if we had an interest, yeah. right? Like if yeah. we were to take this one, like would you treat it more like biology or for the sake of this being an interesting circumstance, yeah. would you take treat it like a rock sample? I don't know. I guess it would depend on like who we, who, who, is, who the is end for. user was. If it was someone that wanted to study the microbial community, we'd have to treat it more like a bio sample to preserve that or if it was someone just interested in the crust we could take a cross section or a bit of both. Val, how interested in uh, sponge <laughs> cross sections are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds uh, like Kelly's interested. I, I am interested. Like <laughs> really excited about it. I, I, I would be open to sampling. I just uh, am not trained in handling biological materials. So oh, that would be pretty out of my wheelhouse. Raj. But you know Manganese crust like the back of your hand. Sort of. It's always on the back Sometimes of it is hand. the back of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Leela, Chris weighed in on that. Oh. Uh, if you want to share. Well, we'll decay rapidly, but remember the silicified, silicified framework is essentially glass, so it doesn't break down. Oh. That's why sponge spicules are common in the fossil record. Ah, there we go. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so there's actually tissue on that. Like, it looks like oh. it's just the glass spicules, but there's actually a thin tissue around all of that. Yeah. Um, and so that will break down. But what we're seeing most obviously a lot of the time is the spicules. Um, so I'm kind of wondering, um, front row, if this might be a good place uh, once the chip maneuver is done, uh, to maybe try poking around for a rock. Sure. I'm not 100% convinced yet, Okay. so we'll keep looking. Sure, yeah. Do you want us to finish the ship move or do you want us to shop it um, to stop it and arrest this? How wing? much is left in the move? 14 meters. 14? Yeah, one four. Um, yeah, let's just finish the move. Roger. Roger. That was a wonderful duet. <laughs> <laughs> it was. One of our viewers uh, mentioned that the whale shark video is now up on our Twitter and Facebook pages. So if you want to see the whale shark, head over to the Nautilus Live Twitter and Facebook. You can see those. Um, somebody's asking, what are we looking for today? Rocks. Um, this is probably a little bit more of a geologically focused dive because uh, we're along the older, deeper flanks of uh, Nootka Seamount. Um, but we're also interested in uh, uh, seeing what the biological uh, uh, communities look like down here too. Uh, although obviously it's uh, not as uh, populous as uh, the shallower depths where we're diving. So we're, we're interested in some of the earlier kind of main uh, volcanic uh, activity stages um, of the seamount. 
And uh, uh, we're likelier to find uh, uh, some of that um, main stage and some of that earlier main stage activity down at de this depth compared to uh, higher up where more commonly we, uh, we dive. Okay, I'm I'm not seeing a lot of uh, promising material here, so I'm I'm okay to move on. Okay, so Roger. I'll just keep the shipment coming in then. Yeah, let's let's just keep moving. Um, okay. I'll let you guys know if we see something. Roger that. Okay. Okay. This is nav. Another move, step step, please. Can you look at the sponge on the right as we pass by. Yeah. Sponge on the right, Raj. Stand tight. Thank you, Zetus Lapidus. <laughs> looming in the distance. There we go. Oh, there's a bottle. Is that a bottle? Oh, oh, that is it. Yeah. Oh. Do you think there's a note in it? Man. Let's look. Is it someone trying to send us a message? <laughs> <laughs> someone took me too seriously the other day. Very <laughs> 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 deep here. It's an old wine bottle or something. Oh. 3,386 meters. Oh. I want it to be old. Yeah, I don't want it to be like new. I know. <laughs> it's like a Coors Light or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> It is. It does look beer bodily. It's kind of small. Or maybe it's wine bodily. Maybe it's but not look as at bottles. the lasers, though. It's a little piece. bigger than a beer bottle. You I sure? Think. That's wine. Yeah. Yeah. That's wine. Yeah. yeah. You can see where the, the lasers was. look so <laughs> small. It's kind of an odd. Well, I don't know. Maybe it it's just a standard. It has a screw cap. Doesn't it? Has it? Has a screw cap. Yeah, cap. yeah, that's a yeah. modern bottle. Oh man. Lame. <laughs> yeah. Happy Earth Day. Well, <laughs> when someone Thanks comes back in a thousand years, it'll be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Very fair. Okay, come, pull, come partial wide, please. Okay, we want a sponge. It looks like it's open, too, so probably no note. <laughs> Actually, full wide, please. The crabs already read it. <laughs> That's how they learn human speak. Do you speak. think if you put down a wine bottle with a note in it but just like corked it it would the pressure would oh, pop, pop the cork calyx. probably oh, it cool would question. yeah if it was full yeah. of air if it was imagine. full yeah. of air if you had yeah. it full of liquid maybe not but i kind of think it would pop the cork into the yeah. bottle rather yeah, than out of it in. because the sides aren't right. getting compressed but yeah. the the water is pushing on the cork from the outside good and push on in there a bit please this is another one of those sacro calyx we saw earlier. Yeah. Such a, Ooh, a awesome lot of barnacles texture. on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hey, is this the same crinoid that Chris just showed us? Let's see if the, With the like, it looks like it lit. has arms or has it, stuff on the tips. It does. What are the lighter colored things on the stock? The barnacles. barnacles. Yeah, yeah, barnacles. barnacles. Yep. Shucks, I wanted to see what he meant by that. <laughs> but oh, this guess. one looks like it's full. Uh, yes, I also hear the rest of science party line, so. Um, I hear you on SPL. Yeah, I think so. All right, do you guys have a question? Yes. Uh, no, not all volcanoes are formed, or not all mountains are formed by volcanoes. Uh, some are formed by uh, movement of tectonic plates, either by pushing them together or by pulling them apart and having parts of the crust drop down and then what's left sitting up higher uh, can form mountains. Yeah, welcome You're very welcome. To the west coast of the uh, continental U.S. Yeah, all sorts of ways to form mountains. Some of them are volcanoes, though. True enough. Yep, they're doing a, uh, a web session, so they're uh, bouncing some questions over here periodically, and uh, I don't have a yeah. direct web link, so we'll just do it over Science Party, and we'll we'll have a Science Party. <laughs> <laughs> One of our viewers says that that's their bottle. They sent the cheese moon in painting, just like we said. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the throwback. Chris there. just gave us another <laughs> joke for the science book. <laughs> I love a full circle story. You know, like they listened to us before so they could like loop it back. Yeah. Love it. Close some of those plot holes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess wine and cheese go really well together. Yeah. Oh. Very considerate. <laughs>
right, so yeah, we're uh, cruising along. I'm keeping half an eye out for uh, what looks to be loose rock, but may or may not actually be. And if we see something promising, which I think we might be here shortly, uh, we'll uh, we'll find a place to uh, put Herc down, and we'll go we'll go poke the ground some more. Roger. See yeah. if anything moves. Sounds good. Well, yeah. I think this is just sediment, but it so looks like a sea star shape. Just a weird uh, coincidence. Oh, yeah. yeah the angles are just seeing. right. I think that's sediment, though, yeah. Nice spot. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. It's funny. <laughs> Val, if you want, we can have Kylie on the ready on the arm, and we can just do a fly pick. Okay. Point, and then if we don't like it, just put it back down. Okay. So wait, hopefully we don't have to stop the ship that Pick, way. poke, and put it back down. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> so let us know at any point that you see something you want. All right, sounds good. Thank you. So just a reminder, we are diving in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, which protects uh, the bigger part of the Hawaiian archipelago, the northwestern Hawaiian Islands, and it's nearly the biggest protected area on the planet also recognized as a dual um, cultural and natural world heritage site. So very honored to be able to explore this, this area and see some areas that have never been visited before. Very much so. It's a rare opportunity. I'm half wondering if that one is loose. The big boy? Or the little one next to um, it. Yeah, the, 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 the little one, one next to yeah, the lasers. Raj. Raj, yeah. Raj. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that big one will fit in Herc. No. Yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> <laughs> we well, can use it for ballast, but uh, that's it. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> asked a question about uh, a rock that Dan had on the porch and if it's still yeah, there. We'll probably I think just it is, get yeah. this on a fly. Yep, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh. When did that happen? I it's, for did that. <laughs> it's for ballast. It's for ballast. Or for fun. I guess they wanted it for a sample and then they didn't want it for a sample and I said, well. I'll just hang on to that for now until we don't need it anymore. Surprise poor try. All right, Kylie, go ahead. Okay, Raj. Coming on. So these rocks have been really deceptive so far. Some stuff that all of us were convinced was loose was actually, like, glued down. So this is anybody's guess. I'll get you a little closer. Raj. That should be good. And now that we're getting closer, I'm kind of worried it's stuck in the back. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and give it a poke. Time to poke some rocks. Swing and a miss. <laughs> Maybe a little closer. No, I got it. I just uh, needed to read an index. Ooh, yeah, I think it might be. Sorry, let's do this. The ship starts moving right when you're trying to do all this delicate work. Nice. Oh, I don't think that's, that's in there. Yeah. A little bit confusing. Okay. Let me try one more time. I think that's pretty glued in there, yeah. Kelly. Raj. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> still, still hunting. I'm just gonna poke at it. <laughs> yeah. It's there. Yeah. Rock poking is an excellent hobby. Confirmed. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Poke, poke. Oops. Yep. That's a rock. It's not indexed. Roger. That is indexed. Okay. Great. <laughs> Trixie rockses. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> she, she does a good Gollum. I thought it was impressive. Uh, I'm not going to do the Andy Circus voice. I can't do that. <laughs> it would be forever recorded on SPL. Are you that sure too? you don't want to? I'm shoulder. quite sure. Yeah. Turn into a highlight. <laughs> don't think I can pull that off. Got it. Nice. Okay. We haven't done uh, introductions in a while. Oh, you're right. I'm um, seeing a couple of candidates. Maybe this little guy here. Maybe that one. Ooh, on I'm probably right. going to get fooled again. Yeah, the one on the right. Yeah, that looks promising now. Okay. Yeah. Um, Almost I think has some angles. I think it's about the right size. All right, we'll go for the one on the right here. Hey? Yeah, maybe yeah. 12 to 15. Just watch. It's going to be glued down again. It's this manganese crust, man. It is gnarly. Looks a little flat. 
I okay, agree. Okay. Or pyramidal, maybe, if you look at the right side. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think, Val? Is it? I'm not sure yet. It's going to be tough pickings the whole dive. Give me the rock. <laughs> <laughs> I want the rock. My friend wants the rock. <laughs> Give us the rock. <laughs> Internal oh. Oh. Like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> they're right. like right yeah, there, there and they're just teasing Whoa. us. <laughs> Maybe it just yeah, I don't slid think it's off. Go oh, come on, I don't fine. think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guy, leave <my> place. <laughs> <laughs> Told you they're deceptive. Just is thrusting up and down. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> no. like, My friend wanted a rock. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find one eventually. <laughs> uh, mm. Intros? Yeah, why don't we uh, say who we are and share something that brings us joy? Oh. Roger. <laughs> we know Kylie's right now. <laughs> getting getting <laughs> rocks for her friends. <laughs> <laughs> My friend wants a rock. It's <laughs> <laughs> the thrusting away from me, though. <laughs> yeah, this is why our watch is called the Nocturnals. Yeah, you never, right, never, right. never fully wake up. We never quite lose that. Yeah, I've been up since 7.30 and, yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, it's like when you're in, like, a little kid in the shopping cart and your mom's, like, moving the cart too fast, you can't grab the aisle stuff. <laughs> 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 <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> no, put it back. <laughs> but I want a rock. <laughs> All right, Story Christopher, read us back in. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so it was what again? Uh, some, just introduce yourself and then share something that brings you joy. And maybe let's say where we're all from. And we can say where we're from too. Yeah. So my name is Christopher. I'm from New Hampshire. I'm a middle school science teacher. In the rest of my life, and. Uh, I am uh, also a, a slam poet, and so Ooh. something that brings oh, me wow. joy is uh, performing poetry for a room full of strangers. Cool. And, uh, That's very yeah, cool. It's really fun. My hat is off too because that would be really scary for me. I don't think I can. You know, do I'm that. a total introvert, and I like in a party with a lot of people. I am just like wallflower, but. Uh, you know, put me in front of a microphone and I can do anything. It's, wow. it's really weird. So he's just a channel. That's, That's awesome. awesome. That's really cool. Which way are we going? Uh, why don't you go next? All right. My name is Justin, and um, I grew up in Northern California, Sonoma County, but currently live in uh, Hilo, Hoi, and work for Papahanao Mokoke Marine National Monument. I would say, I you know, as much as I love the ocean and it's just for fun and for healing. Uh, I love growing things, so having my hands in the dirt and harvesting food that I planted is one of my favorite things. It brings me joy, especially when I can do it with my, my family. Nice. Um, I'm Val Finlayson. Uh, What's in the, in the, in the Atalanta can? Do you guys see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, do you know? I want you to know what you are. are. We're going to put the introductions on pause, and we are going to focus on this for a second. Just oh, what are you? Do they want you? to stay around this area? Uh, oh, yeah, Val. Yeah, let's, let's hold for a minute. Okay, so you want to pause at waypoint two? What yeah, let's that? let's pause here. What um, is that? I'm still looking for a rock, too, and this might be a better spot, but I think we may have another octopus. Could we oh, zoom on that? Oh. Oh, oh, it's another wait. dandelion siphonophore? No, no, no. What is uh, this? That's, uh, octopus. that's an octopus. It's, it's, it's got to be a double octopus. I totally it's take it It's, it's, it's an octopus flying. I'm going to, okay, Whoa. come wide a little bit. Yeah. I don't know what it's please. Oh, 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 no, oh, buddy, buddy, oh, watch your head. Oh. Snap. What position, please? <laughs> that was amazing. That's an octopus. That is yeah, definitely it is. And it's gorgeous. And is it going down now? How big was that? Um, you oh. can push in a little bit. Do you think we could get that oh. on her? No, because it's, well, too it's high. way Wrong behind way. them and somewhere okay. between us, yeah. Huh. Um, wow. This deep. Yeah, it's too oh, murky man. To, to get him with the iron. If you want to come in front of her, we wouldn't complain. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's weird. just spinning. Wow. It's just doing pirouettes. That's lovely. Oh. Come here. Totally had me fooled there for a second when it was more in that discal shape. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Wow. Lovely. Okay. 
that's I mean we're, he's gonna lose I'm gonna lose him in a second okay. but, but that was pretty cool huh? that good. was very cool very cool good observation there good Bye, catch friend. nice catch it's so rare that anything cool happens in that like <laughs> a bird's eye view but he that was cool is really yeah. delightful makes you wonder how much stuff is swimming around us all so the time yeah, yeah. Totally. in the in between yeah Bye. Oh, I can't I can't look away well I have something that brings me joy now yeah. <laughs> it's an octopi. Two oct Dumbo octopus. Octopuses. 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 I th yeah, I think, Octopodes. I think let's try those if we can. Okay. okay, so we'll do my intro real quick. Uh, I'm Val. Um, I like rocks. Rocks bring me joy, but also uh, tinkering with things like bikes, computers, oh. um, building custom like keyboards and stuff. Uh, that's the thing that, that brings me a lot of joy, too, oh uh, when this I'm not obsessing about rocks. <laughs> So, have you talked to Justin about his keyboard? Yes, yeah, we have so we've talked about cool. over his keyboard. That's our, Justin Lowe, not me. And also, I will say, right, um, OET has okay, set us up with some very nice piece. keyboards here in the control van. Oh, I, nice. I am a fan. All right, I we're gonna value so these two rocks here. Are what you are interested uh, in? Yep. If those are, if either of those are um, loose, um, I will be thrilled. Uh, thrilled with one of them. Okay, you're in good position there. But they may not be. <laughs> Sorry, could you just tell us straight for me? Those two uh, centers the lasers. Yeah. lasers. Either of those two, although, yeah, I'm still not sure if they're going to move on us. Mm, my friend wants a rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Fine. Oh, I think this one's going to be loose, though. I, I'm just like... It's just like snake eyes on the uh, on the rock rolls uh, here. Wow. Man. Okay, no. What about where the lasers are? I can't tell what the one of, in the back. Mm. Yeah, the potato looking thing. But potato. But you told us you didn't want potato. Hey, beggars may not be choosers <laughs> on this dive. <laughs> or is it an Come ostrich here, potato? Egg? No. No. Oh. 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 Did but it just like, break? is it yeah. all crust? Can we look at it anyway? Yeah, let's get a look at that. Okay. 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 I mean, this is. I mean, this is this is interesting in all aspects too, because uh, with these very thick manganese crusts, is, yeah. uh, some of our uh, USGS colleagues who are uh, interested in those crusts mm. will also uh, be uh, intrigued. It looks like there's a rock in there. I think. Yeah, it looks like the ones that you showed us that were orangey yeah. on the inside. Yeah, I'm. Do you yeah, like it? I like it. Raj. Oh. oh, there's a tiny sponge. There is. Yeah, oh, there please. is. Maybe. Okay, where does it go? Um, um, starboard. Can you come wide on Atlanta? So, back row, I'm going to yeah. pop ahead of it. So, if you guys sure. want to hit your waypoint now, and then I'm going to move. Okay. I'm, I'm indexed if you want me to be. Roger. And make your Sounds good. Starboard you the B, I whenever you're. D, Delta. B for B boy. B, Bravo, Roger. Okay, I'm gonna change the cameras. Got it. Um, starboard Bravo. And just for our sanity check, we don't have anything floaty, I'm imagining. Nope. There's no no bio samples. No, indeed. Roger. We saw another octopus. We did. One for zero, correct, thank you. And I really do believe that that was the third one that we saw. Leela, remember the other one? Uh, like the orb from the, the Atalanta view? Mm. And I was like, what's that? And you were like, I saw it too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I remember that. I, I really do believe that that was octopus because of the shape of it and the where it was translucent versus where it wasn't. All right, we're going to sit down here. I'm kind of feeling like we should, on the way to waypoint three, maybe hug the contour a little bit. And see if we can see something uh, on a steeper slope. Okay. Mm Switching over salvos. It now. does look pretty flat otherwise, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's not too long up to waypoint three, but um, 
Yeah, maybe not following directly up that way might give us some uh, additional uh, insight about these depths. Like going to east this way? Uh, yeah, let's do that. It looks perfect, Suleiman. Okay. Wow, that box already has a good number of things in there, doesn't it? Yeah, unroll that, yeah. Roger. Raj. Thank you. I'm just going to index. Yep. If you want to rotate to get the more bulbousy part in there. Come here, stop. That good? Yep. Uh, maybe index it and rotate it around so the bulbousy part stays in, so even though it's going to fall into B. Index it and then what? Yeah, and then once you're done indexing, rotate it around the wrist. Okay. So that you know that the bulbousy part will fall into. Oh, pain. Roger. It leaves little uncertainty. Nice. Nice. Like that, that. yeah, Rog. That's what you meant. Yeah. I gotcha. That's nice. Cool. Thank Very you. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. Sample acquired. Sample <laughs> acquired. Sample secured. All and right. secured. <laughs> <laughs> Picked, poked, put in the box. Put in the box. <laughs> <laughs> the three P's of deep geology. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last octopus that we saw? What day was that? Oh, days are hard. Yeah. Two, yes. <laughs> three days ago. Something like Something that. Something like that. Yeah, three. Uh, it was 1921 it was, was the dive yeah. that we saw. And 21. I don't, oh, I I don't know what 20. day that. Uh, no, it was 21. 21. Okay. I, yeah. Uh, ah, well, today is I think 23, and we had some mapping in between question marks. So <laughs> life's hard. Life yeah. is quite confusing. Um. Okay. Are we? I think we're ready to move back here. Roger. Let's keep going with introductions. Yeah, oh, right. I was just waiting to see if there was a ship move about to be called. Okay. Yeah, you can go ahead and call one in there, Suleiman. We'll go to east, 090. To east, 090. 090. Ooh, got to come down. Go ahead and call it in. Approach, this is nav. Next move on bearing 090, 50 meters. Yes, please. Okay. Um, I am Leela. I'm sitting in the data logger seat way in the corner of the van. Uh, I'm also the science manager on this cruise. And I'm from Brooklyn, New York. And things that bring me great joy are being outside and adventuring in any form on the water or on mountains or the beach or whatever. I just love it. Nice. I've seen a lot more of those little depressions in the sediment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Suleiman, you want to go next? Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Suleiman. Uh, I'm the navigator here. Uh, I'm from uh, Oman. Things brings me joy is uh, hiking and traveling. I think both are mm -hmm. very much fun for me. Yes. Next. <laughs> um, I'm Jess Sandoval. I'm Hercules sitting, flying, you know. Um, from California, 
Northern California as well, actually. So, um, yeah, and things that bring me joy are, I like, I love dancing uh, mm. and, yeah, spending time with friends and family and um, that brings me good joy. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was waiting for you. Like <laughs> I just had to introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Kylie. I'm I'm from Fall River, Massachusetts, and um, I'm sitting in the Argus seat. And I like Justin. Also, love to garden. I love. I don't even care if I plant stuff. I mostly just like to pick up sticks. Picking <laughs> <laughs> um, up sticks, gardening, same difference. And <laughs> and unlike Chris, I'm like the opposite, where I'm like like social around people, but if you, I'm, I'm like really nervous on stage or in front of a camera. Mm. Um, I clam up, and I'm like, I don't remember how to be myself. <laughs> um, and like Jessica, I like to dance. <laughs> And unlike Suleiman or Leela, I don't like doing things outside. <laughs> 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 Except for pick up sticks. <laughs> Raj. <laughs> Love it. Catchphrase is? Raj. <laughs> I think I forgot to say where I was from. I'm originally from Michigan. I currently live near DC, so. This is Val. I'm a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> geochemist. Yep. Very much a geochemist. Yeah, we, we got all sorts of different talents coming together. Looking good. Got one more. I'm Rhett. I'm from Florida. I do video, and my dog brings me joy. Oh. Dog. Nice. Dogs, dogs are, like, joy just condensed yes. into a living being. <laughs> I appreciate dogs so much. Yeah. Cranberry sauce of happiness. Just condensed into that can and slurped. <laughs> <laughs> slurped out. <laughs> I tried to remind myself of that when my dog was a puppy. And as a herding dog, I think every piece of my clothing had holes in it. Oh. Mm. Little holes of joy. Yeah, Love little, holes. Little holes of joy. <laughs> That's how I think of them now. I can't wait to see my dog. I have been out at sea since uh, March 9th. Oh, wow. And I think she misses me. Hmm. I'm indifferent, but I bet she's thinking about me. <laughs> <laughs> so Are you trying to convince very yourself happy dog. of that? You don't miss her, sure. <laughs> I was talking to Jess about her last night. I was like, this is all the ways I hold her. <laughs> 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 I, I hold her that. like this, and I kiss her like that, <laughs> and I call her names, my little enchilada. Are these just rock veins right here? I don't know what that thing is. Mm. I'm kind of worried that I might have asked us to move over like a bunch of sediment, but um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Once we get you know a little further, maybe it'll be better. I think they are. If just that was rocks. the wrong decision, that's my fault though. So. Uh, Everybody can blame me for that. It's okay. No, <laughs> nobody knows this stuff. I'm yeah. Just feeling it out. I think that's a dead spot. Yeah. We had a question about uh, someone yes, wondering you? if there's microplastic in the water at this depth. Probably. Yes. There have been sediments taken, sediment samples taken from the deep sea that have microplastics in them. Um, many of them, yeah. I want to say, I'm going to look it up, and this may be wrong, but I'm pretty Could sure that microplastics have been found at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I think, isn't that that same so. encrusting sponge? Good I eye. think so. Uh, Jess, you were saying. Another one of those. And there's that gone, gone, gone asteroid. asteroid. Yeah. I think sea that's star. the same one we've been seeing a few of. Yeah. It almost reminds me of, like, ancient pottery shards or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Yes, okay. Microplastics found in Mariana's oh, Trench. Yes. So everywhere. They're everywhere. So the rocks that we've been bringing on board uh, from the previous dives have had uh, usually millimeter to about centimeter wide, like, you know, those botryoidal 
you know, spheroid bulbs, whatever you want to call them. These are the, like the, the individual like uh, radial bulbs, I guess. Um, I don't know what you call individual pieces of a botryoidal texture, actually. Um, mm -hmm. They're closer to 10 centimeters in a lot of places. Very large Several botryoids. Botryoids, there we go. <laughs> Large botryoids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use that. That's, I like that a lot. <laughs> Whoa. Somebody's been busy on that rock. Mm -hmm. That was a nice to sketch mode if I've ever seen yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, cool. It's funny it just hops from one rock to the here. next. Etch a sketch. That's fun. That looks like a more efficient coverage pattern than a Roomba, though, because well, Roombas are, are yeah. Sure oh, yeah, the basic ones are random. Another move, uh, east, 50 meters. Looks like another C pen. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Down and to the left there? Yeah. It's in the sediment, so that'd be my guess. Uh, he's in a funky spot there. Yeah. Yeah. I guess there are some like more complex Roomba models that have like more optimized like coverage patterns or something <laughs> that I've read about. Because yes, I'm I'm a nerd who reads about like pattern optimization and stuff because it's really interesting. Um, and yeah, you can go from like these these algorithms that just kind of have the Roomba just go in a random direction until it bounces off of something. But uh, then there are others that it, uh, some of them are like programmable, but uh, there's some others that have like some more complex uh, algorithms that uh, help optimize coverage so you don't get like a random like a hot spot of really clean floor in like somewhere in the middle of the room and then like questionably clean floor <laughs> at the edges <laughs> or the corners. And I'm kind of seeing like some sort of optimization in the coverage of those mollusk trails. I like, like that. Like it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not random. Is that a, what is that right there? Two, we don't need to stop, but. I think crinoid. Yeah, oh yeah, good eyes. We saw another octopus and I am not over it. <laughs> that, was, that was a very cool shot. Like the Analetta shots on this dive are phenomenal. They are. Thank you. <laughs> you are very welcome. Thank you, front row. Can we take a look at what's going on right in this section here? Some life? Well, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Something <In> there. <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> Any sign of life. <laughs> well, it looks like Hello? a sponge. There's oh, a yeah. sponge. It does look like a sponge. Oh, yeah, sure enough. <laughs> I think that that's your catchphrase, Val. Sure enough. Yeah, probably. I love I, it. I, I come pre-programmed with uh, <laughs> several phrases. <laughs> <laughs> pre-programmed. Another C pen and sponge. Stock sponge there, yeah. Look at that population density. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you think we should take an eDNA sample? <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh. That stuff's addictive. I can't. I know can't it start. is. Uh, too much. Too, too sticky for my fingers. Yeah. It's so good, though. We have a question about um, the cubes in the wet lab. What are they for? About the cubes in the wet lab? <laughs> Yeah, there's like oh, plastic, plastic, oh, the plastic like hoods. Cube, cube attainers. Oh, yeah. the plastic, the hoods. Okay, the hoods are for um, Beth Orcutt's analysis. So Beth and Annabelle are processing their microbial samples in there. Um, there's all kinds of easy ways for microbes, microbial samples to become contaminated, and just some of those are, uh, you know, floating around in the air. So they do their best to 
keep out what they can from their samples. And so each of those little makeshift hoods sort of has a, has a UV lamp in it and they'll UV sterilize things beforehand. Um, they autoclave uh, their supplies with a pressure cooker, actually. It's super creative. Um, and, and then they analyze their samples inside the hoods in the little plastic cubes that they set up, which is pretty cool. This is the first larger fan coral seen in a while. Yeah. Or at all on this dive. I'm not it. sure if they saw any. Not sure. Definitely not one this, um, yeah, Sock was also waiting to see what a little closer look at that fan. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll wait a little second on our tether so we don't yeah. get yanked around. Oh, no, I like it. It's kind of like suspenseful. Yeah. We're, we're building <laughs> up. Da -da. Da -da. Just <laughs> out of reach. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, we can enjoy this view of the rocks. Wow. It is a nice view yeah, of the rocks. It is. <laughs> Both I'm enjoying it. Beautiful talus. Atalanta and it her crew. is stuck to the seafloor. Yeah. <laughs> In the meantime, we can take bets on if this is a bamboo or a primnoid. Yeah. Primnoid. Okay. So when that cube question came up, I thought that was somebody asking about the cardboard boxes. For oh, the yeah. Because <laughs> we have a stack of boxes in the lab we that do. we're going to be packing stuff up with later uh, this afternoon. Lots and lots of rocks. So many rocks. Lots of boxer rocks. That too. And then I thought they were talking about the cube containers, you know, the little collapsible plastic cube containers that oh, yeah. they use to collect water. Primnoid likely. Oh, Sorry. hey, Steve. Hi, Steve. Welcome to the party, Steve. With lots of crinoids. We call it Vegas in the back. <coughs> Do I see a wee tiny bit of current here in the wee tiny bit of marine snow. Mm -hmm. I think I do. A little bit. Put a fish on in there, but please. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that those car carnivorous jellies? Or is that a tiny, tiny anemone? I think they're anemones. I think they're anemones. Because they're like lighter color. Yeah, any more zoom there, right? Because uh, the bottom <coughs> left one looks like it has tentacles. Oh, yeah. oh, good eyes. And the others are kind of wrapped around facing the other direction. Roger. Yep. Can I come a little wide, please? Actually, uh, can we zoom back in on the stock? It's got three associates. On the at stock? Least. Uh, yeah, on the like chunky one. Oh, yeah, on the bottom. And it's got a brittle star up at the top. Brittle star, anemones. Go ahead and push on in there again, please. Large crinoid, and then. Oh, yeah, I don't see any lines. What is that on the bottom? This guy. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Waving around a it's bit. It's a little spidery. All good. Pete go Ned. Yeah, no worries. I think that's good. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, sorry about the shot. Oh, I can set up good. a bit. Full wide. So we're calling that a primnoid? I think so. Yeah. We'll see what Steve says, but I didn't see any black lines for bamboo skeleton. You guys good here? Or do you want me to sit back in? I think we're good there. Roger. Well, what kind of rocks are we looking for today? Um, any rock that is not stuck to the seat floor. All right. Um, uh, for a more serious answer, uh, we're looking for um, more of the same, uh, more uh, lavas, uh, igneous rocks. And uh, what we expect to find down here is likely uh, some of the older rocks erupted from the seamount. Not the oldest, but older. And... Uh, uh, possibly some of the best representatives uh, of um, the original uh, mantle that these melts formed from. Um, and uh, these, these uh, we hope will give us a uh, very nice uh, uh, geochemical signature of um, what we believe is a mantle plume that is uh, uh, has fed these volcanoes. And yeah. nowadays is probably located somewhere in the southeastern Pacific. We just passed another colophagus on our right, but I don't think we need to There's a little, check uh, it out. Black coral again. Oh yeah, good eye. With uh, what is that on the rock next to it? Is it an anemone? There's two of them there. Yeah, there's another one up here too. There's a fish right in the middle. Or, no, maybe not oh. a fish. Oh. I thought it was a fish. Um, you gonna yeah, read that out, Leela? Quite a bit below that, Steve. Dark shadow. 
Yeah, so Steve is mentioning that the deepest record of Norella, which is maybe the primnoid that we just saw, um, is 3,075 meters, according to a 2018 paper. And we're at 3,376 meters. So if it is Norella, that would be quite a bit deeper than the deepest known record in the Pacific. By quite a bit. Put it in the Guinness Book. <laughs> uh, with that, with that uh, tree? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love circular jokes. Correction. <laughs> record means collected. OK, so collected, Norella. Oh, well, we can. Well, anyway, yes, <laughs> rod, rod, rod. <laughs> All I'm saying is, I'm Next game. Next move would be zero eight zero. What do you want? Next, next move zero eight zero fifty meters. Yes, please. Tell me again the the bearing. Zero eight zero. I'm sorry, thank you. I was listening, but I also was not. I was listening, but I couldn't hear you. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I heard words and nothing landed in my memory. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. It's just like the buffer isn't there. Yeah. What yes, is, is this? You. Another sponge? Yeah, it might well be. I'm going to come up a little bit because there's like a little slopey sloper. Mm, looks, like, looks like the stuff is still all glued down. Uh, uh, I think it's just yeah. sediment. Yeah. I just wasn't sure if we were expecting, going to expect a little bit more. Um, fauna yeah, on the slopes so I think we're, we may actually be seeing less yeah agreed yeah. wow that totally is just sediment just all right I'm gonna set myself up to just lateral along this wall here guys so Raj. something in the oh it's a float never mind another little sea star yeah yeah, this stuff is so welded together. There's a sponge stock. But oh, seeing yeah. a lot of those all dive. Oh, yeah. And a little sponge there. Oh, yeah. So, Val, what is our current understanding of how hot spots form? Uh, so, the way that we think hot spots work is, is that um, they uh, come from a thermal chemical anomaly. So, something that is uh, unusually warm and chemically a little different than. Uh, the rest of the upper mantle around it um, that stays sort of fixed uh, in one place. They do drift around a little bit, uh, we think. Uh, well, we know. Uh, we've done some comparisons on that. And um, as uh OK, um, good enough. Sorry. Um, Sorry, I'm just messing as, my lights. Uh, uh, in this case, the Pacific uh, Oceanic Plate um, moves toward the northwest. Uh, the uh, hot spot, kind of hanging out in its little its little uh, region of mantle, um, it it uh, generates a little bit of melt in the uh, uppermost mantle that gets transported into a uh, crustal plumbing system. It kind of breaks through the crust, and uh, that erupts and forms these little uh, volcanoes. Uh, for a few million years each, and uh, as the plate continues moving, eventually those volcanoes move off of where the main melting zone of the hotspot is, and uh, they move away and toward the northwest. And uh, Sorry, what was that? Then you get a new seamount, uh, a new volcano that uh, uh, pops up above the hotspot, and then you know rinse, repeat this, and you uh, get a uh, trail of volcanoes that um, get progressively older the further they move away from that hotspot. So it forms these uh, these seamount chains that uh, that we see now, and um, uh, yeah, classic example of that is Hawaii. So if you go to Big Island on Hawaii, uh, you'll see some active volcanoes there. And then if you were to go over to Oahu, um, we think that island is um, extinct or close to extinct. Uh, no real uh, volcanic activity there um, uh, for a while. Uh, and then if you go over to Kauai. Uh, it's a much older volcano. Um, you see everything's much more weathered and eroded, and you can actually see into uh, the main volcano there. So you can see that, um, you know, you can actually, like, uh, ground truth that uh, uh, these volcanoes get older the further they get from that, uh, from where the active volcanoes are here. So that's, that's the kind of thing that we're looking at here, is uh, getting the right kind of material to uh, confirm ages of these seamounts and uh, the direction that they may or may not get uh, older. And we see that all over the seafloor, too. There are um, quite a few of these hot spots. 
Thanks, Al. Yeah, you're welcome. You have another question about uh, the Niskin tubes. We collect water when we're down a uh, depth and then we bring it up to uh, the deck. And how do we get the water out of the Niskin bottles? Um, they I mean, you first loosen a little, so it's kind of like they it, it shuts closed um, and, and keeps the water inside. Um, but if you open the little bleed valve on the top, then you can let some uh, air in. There's the same pressure. And then you push in a little stopper on the bottom, and the water comes flowing out. You remember those uh, big cans of Juicy Juice? Yes. Anybody? You know, and you had to, like, pop, t like, uh, two holes in it, like, so that it would actually flow out? It's like that. Yeah, or with your olive oil container, you know, there's, like, usually a... Really? You, like there's a, with the salad pouring bottles, there's usually a like a little air tube too, a little air spigot inside. Oh, you have fancy oil. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> no, no, like even the ones downstairs have it, I'm pretty sure. Ah, oh, I did not know that. <laughs> open the air vent, open the petcock, water will flow. Um, Suleiman, we have an unusual request here. Uh, we've been conferring with uh, the onshore team, and there is considerable interest in uh, collecting a small sample off of that large fan that we passed a while back. Um, do you think it would be feasible to turn turn around and backtrack? Sure. Okay. How far? Um, do you remember where exactly that was? I don't, but it's maybe around that like last squiggle where we paused for a second. Um, so it would be here somewhere? Uh, no, I think the next one after that. This one? Probably there. So back row. Yeah. That'll probably add at least 30 minutes to get yeah, the back there right? settled out. Yeah, so we're 3,000 meters. So if you guys really want to get that sample, we can go. It'll be 30 minutes getting there, sighting up, and probably and then coming back. Coming back. So it's probably like an hour to get that. And we don't really know exactly where that was. Um, so I, that's a pretty long time, but it's up to you, Val. OK, Osaka says it was 10 minutes ago. Yeah, um, but we have to move the whole ship to the other side and then yeah. wait for the layback. And we have 3,300 meters of layback cable. Gotcha. Um, I think let's do it. This is a pretty rare opportunity. OK. Press hold the position, please. So, so we're gonna let the ship. We're gonna swing out of the ship um, backwards and start. Yeah, moving the ship yep. backwards. Raj. So we'll move two six zero reciprocal. Yeah, reciprocal, please. Roger. Bridge. This is Nav. I thought I heard my voice. My name. Can we have a move uh, on bearing two six zero, fifty meters, please? Yes. Um, and so we have a general idea of where we were at? I where think it's somewhere... Uh, this one? Yeah, either this, uh, this, this one. That one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. There's a whole little... Th th you guys can here it looks like this area. One, two, three, four. Okay. Maybe five gun so asteroids right there. Little sea stars. We'll start looking at, at the beginning, where you are now, on bearing 233, mm -hmm. um, almost um, 30 meters okay. from where you are now. Roger. 230. All right, let's see how the ship settles out with this, with this arrest move. Okay, sounds good.
Back row, can you guys uh, give us an update on what the expectations are for um, when we're going to come off bottom? I heard that we're either coming off, we're going to be on deck at midnight, or we're going to be on at deck at 8. Um, that is the current status as I'm aware of it, but I'm waiting for um, an update, which should come in the next 20 minutes or so. Okay. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep you apprised. Sure. Roger. Gracias. De nada. Yeah, another question about the Niskin bottles. How often do we find living things swimming around in there? Um, I have never found a visibly living thing inside yeah. uh, the Niskin water. Just microbes. Micro living things. I've taken a many a CTD rosette, um, and I, didn't, I never, I never found anything like a fish or anything like that in it ever. Hmm. Another question about the ship. Uh, maybe Suleiman can answer this one. How does the ship have such precise movement and positioning controls? So the ship using uh, DB system, uh, which uh, using the thrust, uh, power thruster, uh, in order to hold uh, the ship's position and move it within uh, meters, very precise. Somebody said, uh, don't you hate when you go shopping and you remember you forgot something on the drive back? Mm -hmm. You have to turn around and go back to the store. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now we're doing that on the ocean bottom. Yep, and uh, let me tell you, it is, uh, it's, it's intimidating a little bit to be making that uh, decision very, very quickly. You're doing a great job. Watch the leader leading us. <laughs> Does anyone want to explain layback that we keep sort of bringing up for folks wondering what's happening? Yeah, I can uh, give a good explanation of layback. Um, so we have we have a 6-8 cable that's leading up to Atalanta. Um, and so we're at 3,380 meters of depth. Uh, and so that means that we have 3,380 meters of cable out in the water. Um, and so on shallower dives, we can make kind of much quicker calls uh, and have the ship make the ship moves. And then um, the shorter the length, the easier it is to respond. So when we have 3,000 uh, meters of cable out, we have a lot of cable to now swing. And if we change direction, we had to change the momentum in that cable as well. So not only are we going, we had to wait for the layback that the ship was currently going in one direction, but when you reverse the direction, you're actually going to have to reverse the momentum in the cable and then also uh, take out that layback of, of, you know, how much we have paid out uh, and then make for progress in the other direction. That's why it takes a lot longer at um, deeper depths. So in shallower waters, it's a lot easier to make more instantaneous moves, but as you can see, it's going to be, uh, it probably takes like 10 minutes to get that swing arrested and start making progress in the other direction. And Kylie, <clears throat> are you um, winching in as the ship, as the hypotenuse there sort of shrinks and the ship reaches azimuth over us? I would, yeah, yes. But, uh, but, uh... Um, Haven't felt it yet? Nope. Yep. Nope, nope, nope. So there's a big U-shape somewhere in the cable, I guess. It's like a big pendulum, yeah? Yeah. Big pendulum. So one of our viewers went back on the YouTube feed mm -hmm. and got the exact uh, coordinates from HiPAC <laughs> while we wow. were looking at the uh, Go Team. That's helpful. 
Cool if they can relate. So what do we got? Cool. <laughs> they are they are in the in the chat now. If, I don't know if you can call those up. Interesting. Cool. I can look over your shoulder and type it into the science chat. Oh, maybe. Yeah. yeah, that works. Great. Maybe you can turn your mic off and read it off to me. Yeah. Jeez Louise. Uh, it's all out there awesome. live anyway. I Thanks, suppose it doesn't matter. Thank you. <coughs> uh, it's gone there, yeah. Hey, um. Can you turn your mic off again? I'll just read it back and make sure I did it right. I should make another move uh, 20 meters. Jess? Bridge, this is Nav. Another move 260, uh, 20 meters, please. Goodbye, little sea stars. <laughs> yeah. Make a nice little constellation. Is that so those tiny white things is what you were pointing out? They're like tiny on the rocks? Yeah. yeah. There's oh. like five or five or so of them. Go ahead, Bridge. Affirmative. Oh, that's very sweet, Christopher. Hmm. We have a viewer named Leah who just finished medical school today. Ooh, hey, congratulations. congratulations. Will Congrats. officially be a doctor in two weeks and has been watching streams of Nautilus Live to relax after long days of studying and taking care of patients. And wow. She says thank you to all of us for bringing the deep ocean to her screen. So glad we yeah. could help you get through that. <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, that is really congratulations. so much effort. It you is. did a great job. There's another question a, a while back. Uh, can Chris Kelly's wish list be found online anywhere? Hmm. I don't think so. No, I think, yeah, wasn't it just kind of pulled from our yeah. existing uh, I think it's I online ID guides? Yeah. Yeah. That would be kind of cool. It would certainly be sort of like a yeah, cool way to follow along. I think we have significantly shortened that we on have. this cruise. Yeah, look at that view. So a lot of what we're looking at right now are um, heavily manganese encrusted uh, volcanic rocks sitting a fair amount of uh, fine sediment on them too and uh, may look like a pile of mostly loose rock but um, it's not. It's uh, got a thick enough manganese crust at this depth that um, a lot of this stuff is pretty much locked into place. So we've tried sampling periodically and it's been, uh, it's, it's taken multiple tries and a fair amount of effort to locate samples that we could actually uh, move, let alone pick up. So um, this has been kind of an interesting dive in that aspect. Um, you've seen that the uh, manganese crust is as thick as around 10 centimeters here. So um, that is a, a challenge to work through for the geological aspects of this. But despite that, um, our pilots have done a lovely job um, uh, getting some samples for uh, 
the geology and the microbiology. And uh, at the moment, we are working on some maneuvers to uh, uh, back the ROVs up along with the ship um, to return to a, uh, an interesting biological specimen that um, we, a little bit belatedly, uh, decided we would like to uh, 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 that we'd like to do some further study on. So um, that's what we're doing right now. And because we're so deep down, we're about at, let's see, 3381 meters depth, um, facilitating a complete uh, reversal in direction does uh, take a little while. Uh, we have to deal with something called layback, where uh, we have to um, manage uh, the winch and the cable that is uh, paid out, which is what keeps uh, Atalanta and Herc uh, connected to the ship, so we can tell them what to do. So um, we're, we're working on that right now. So we are very close from it. Oh, there it is. Maybe. Or is that a different one? Uh, That's different. That looks like a different one. No, we're still like 20. It's hard to tell from this height. From yeah, so it's going to have very dense. Yep. It was much branching. more dense. Yeah. I just thought maybe from this height it was uh, looking smaller than it is. So yeah. the ship completed the move, will hold. Okay. Till you get the... That is less full, isn't it? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure if it's the same species. We, we have a viewer named Isla who is three years old. What? And she has a question. Have we found any mermaids? No, I wish. We will keep looking, though. We will keep looking. We did find an octopus earlier today. We also have some other viewers uh, that wrote in, uh, Jamie, who's a blogger, wrote in, and uh, Patrick in San Francisco, and another viewer uh, who gave us kudos from Montreal, enjoying our commentary. Folks from all over. Praise this is Nav. Uh, two, four, zero, ten meters, please. Meters, yes. Jess, how high off the deck are we? Uh, we're 12 meters off the back of Herc and probably 8 meters off the front. Okay, thank you. We have folks from 12 different countries watching along with us on uh, Nautilus Live. Yeah, you should stay there because the walls, yeah. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about turning. Oh, uh, is that our sponge? Nope, no, different. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need to see anything with, uh, with Argus right now. Oh, that's, yeah, there was the sack of calyx from earlier. Yeah, 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 a second ago, maybe. Just kidding, we're over a different area. One of our viewers wrote in, they, they think that the reason we're not finding mermaids is because they're the, in the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes, yeah, totally. And could the be. Pacific Ocean has krakens. Krakens. Ooh. Ooh, we better watch out. Yes. M maybe that's what we saw in the uh, Argus cam. Hmm. A little baby kraken. Um, Suleiman, we threw the coordinates in the uh, science chat if you wanted that. Uh, the coordinates are almost the same as we had it here, Perfect. the target we dropped. Great, okay. So we are almost at spot. Excellent. Excellent. So we are oh. right on top of it according to, to the our navigation. Yep. Okay, so yeah. yeah we we should does it, it look like it? Mm, we're going to need to pan around. Oh, I see a sponge. A sponge. I don't know if that's. We have the seen same that sponge, sponge before. Yes. Uh, <laughs> some smaller <laughs> rocks which were nearby. Mm, 
not seeing it in uh, Atalanta camp just uh, yet. Are you full wide on Atalanta? Thank you. Can you stay full wide, please? Keep looking around. Mm -hmm. Looks like a smaller sponge. Yeah, I don't uh, know that we've seen that one. So we're right on top of the where we were. I don't even and recognize these dead this dead sponge bit. Yeah, that's big though, isn't it? And we haven't seen any that big with one growing inside it. Um, an Atalanta cam upper right. Am I seeing something just out of the main light beam? I need a laser pointer. Sure. Uh, that's the big one. Maybe not. Right. Uh, that could Slightly be a little starboard. The sediment throws me yeah. off. Yeah, I think I think it is just sediment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sediment. Maybe to the lower right. Yeah, we're right on top of that waypoint. Mm. Um, doo -doo -doo. Leela, do you have any screen grabs of that thing? Uh, yeah, let me go back and see what I can pull up. It, does it happen to say depth when you take the screen grabs? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I can find, I can find that in the logs. 3373.04. Nice. Okay. So we are... And there probably oh, is that long in that too. And yes. it is... Where are we at right now? 28537. I'm not sure what computer Lila is, is. Oh, if you were to pull up Psy, uh, not Chief Psy, I think it's Psy. That's okay, you? just kidding. Chief Psy. Do Chief Psy. No, that's Val that's has that's it up. That's Val's, yeah. Yeah, so Val has up the oh, lat long and a picture. Can I try to go again south? Yeah, or I'm at three Wait, three what's uh, three now? Um, uh, is that more sediment? Depth three three seven three, yeah. And then that one. That's the that one. Okay. Um, uh, Roger. Gotta be around here somewhere. Yeah, it's funny because if you were standing here, it'd be like right there somewhere. I know. Okay, I think they're pulling the exact coordinates from that screen. Uh, that sponge That's again, just never the sponge, mind. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember seeing whatever this linear feature is. Yeah. Mm. Oop, um, is this it? Nice, good eye. Nice maneuvering, guys. Whew. That was getting tense for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of situation that I do get, I do stress about a little bit because it's like we got to get it. <laughs> totally. Yeah, that was a hard call. That was a hard call to make. It was. But I, you know, part part of the strategy that I'm taking into account here is I want to try to 
you know, if, when I'm on watch, I want to try to make sure that, you know, we're, we're getting as diverse a set of objectives as we yeah. can, too. And sometimes... Yes. Yeah. So we're going to put this in a starboard bio box, yeah? Yeah, that or sounds good. Are we going to trim my hair and put in the slurp? Uh, why don't we go for starboard bio first? Okay. Okay. Roger. Yeah. Sounds Steve good. had a. Stand by. Do you want to share that pal or should a I? A bit far. I'm up a bit. A branch planter too might be helpful. Uh, Steve says so. If we just get it a little closer to the to the stalk. Sure. Or from one of the tips of the end. The scientists ashore are very appreciative. As a lot of viewers are already aware, uh, this as a colonial animal, we don't take the whole thing. We can just take a uh, subsample, get some branches, a branch of it. Should I be worried about this floating out? Should we do a snip and then slurp it up? If you guys are really concerned about the, s the preservation of the sample, then yes, but we won't be able to get a branching point. Yeah. OK, let's go for grab then with a branching point. Okay. Grab with the branching point. Yes. Yes. Um, and actually, we can get some better pictures now before we take a pic. I know it was pretty far before. All right, go ahead and push on in there, please, Rhett. Do you want me to get up close with the polyps or yeah. like this? Yeah, okay. polyp shot would be great. Cool. Like that. Nice. Nice. It's a wandering pan and tilt right now. <laughs> That's all good. Maybe a little up towards one of the branches too. Sure. Thanks. Back a bit more. So we're going back for this coral because uh, okay. we believe it's Sweet. the the deepest. That's good. Uh, okay. Find of this coral right, that we've please. ever had. several hundred meters below the lowest recorded observance. Okay, are we ready? Yep, let's do it. I just would love a little telestration of um, about how much and about, I think, so you want where it branches, yeah? Yeah. Well, well, where it branches and a pro like, I'll line it up with the craft and we'll kind of talk about it. Okay, sure. Okay. Lila, do you want to come over here real like, quick? Yeah. Yeah. Roger, okay. Roger, Roger. So the side with the tape on it is the side I want facing us when I do it, right? Uh, yeah. So you want the cutters farther into the body. There, you want the top branch there. So go yeah. ahead and bring it on and reduce your grip force to like three. So like just a piece of what I circled over there? Yeah. yeah. So she was circling two different, there's two different kind of... Yep options there but one yeah. of those two because that way we get a couple nodes branching nodes okay. and those are sort so of off to the ahead. side here so yeah. not not yeah. both just one of those so yeah okay it's like a like a, that small fan the half of the small fan if it's possible okay roger so either that one or that one grip force four or three let's yeah do something small like three or two roger ideally it'll just be about two branching nodes on whatever we get Okay. Can you follow me with the bubble? Yep. Okay. Okay. There you go. Uh, video, can you z zoom partially? That's good there. Um, come out a little bit. So I can also see the arm. Okay. Um, let me just talk to Jess. Yeah. Yeah. If that's a weird angle, we could find a different place for you. Well, do you think? Yeah. Okay, Raj.
Okay. Um, right, can you come full wide? Thanks. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to touch it for, I'm still far away from it, even though it looks like I'm not. Okay. Cool. Can you push now? Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, come in a wee bit tighter. That's that's good. Perfect. Nice. Okay, that's touching. Yeah, Raj. So open fingers. Yep. This isn't a brittle coral, so you'll be fine. Yeah. Nice. No, maybe, yeah. So I think they want both of those pieces there. I, do I want both? I thought I just wanted one. Yeah, well, I'd go one is fine. One. Because that way we have these branches here. Okay, Raj. Right, Leila? Yeah. Okay, Raj. Just give me one second. You can see that they're closing up when we touch them. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get both fingers if in there. The wall. It's, it's okay if you need to do both to make it work. That would be okay, too. Okay. I mean... So oh. Okay. It's a very small part of the whole you can colonial. Or if you colonial. open your fingers a bit more, you'll get a little bit more space. That's That would be good. So cut it where they branched into those two then? Uh, yeah, if that's easier. Right yeah. there, Lila, is that where Uh-huh. Yeah. So, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, it, you can take that section where it branches into the two if you want, if that's easier, yeah. Okay. Like this, yeah? Yeah, yeah that's so really good. good. And I'll just try to get, I mean. Yeah, I would take it there. Don't. Okay, so I have it in bubble. Yep, looks good. Raj. Nice. nice. And then ro rotate your wrist a little bit. Nice, to make sure that it breaks. And then rotate it back the other way, because it looks like you're still on it. A little bit more rotation. Now try taking that piece. And see if it looks like you're still on it. You nice. got it. Nice. 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 Really nice work. Great job. Please come wide. Thank you. That was okay. very delicate work. Do you guys want to zoom on this guy before uh, we start? Yes, please. Okay, Raj. Thanks. I'll line you up here. Thank you. Beautiful work, Kylie. Thank you. That's my, f well, I don't know if that's my first. Um, can you, I don't know, can I get it anymore in Do the light? Wanna, yeah, you want to swing a little outboard there? Thanks. Like that. Yep, that looks good. Go ahead. Okay, uh, video zoom. Mm -hmm. oh, there you are. Nice. Um, that I don't know why I can't focus, focus. it. That's yeah. A, okay. Um, Maybe I'm too close. Maybe it was It bigger. might be too close, I guess. Yeah. That would be my guess. But How's that? It's getting better. I'll halt there. Yeah, it's it's too close is the issue. You might need to pull slightly wide there to get it to focus. Oh, I think, yeah, well, maybe okay. we just get that shot there. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, starboard bio, come Go on. Wide. Um, okay, so that can go into C. Roger. Any idea if this is going to be floaty or not? C as in Charlie. I feel like it will be floaty. Roger. 
I'm gonna secure the starboard thrusters once you get over there. Okay. And then for this one, when you're putting in the box. I'm gonna flip the wrist. Yep. Yeah, Raj. Um, I'm ready for dive salvo. I'm mean, sorry, sample salvo. Yep. Starboard C. Hold on, I'm just gonna index. Slow and steady. Now go down, yeah, instead of shouldering and elbowing down, go down on the wrist. Roger. I just didn't want to poke the um, guys into the wall, you know? Or it's okay, I, they'll oh, bend. Okay. Well, I'll do a little bit of both. Sound good. <laughs> Compromise. Sorry. Wrist down. You see what I mean? So I'll just elbow up and I'll wrist down. Nice. Sorry. I need to re index some. Okay. That's not what I want. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 okay, okay, okay. Like put the hand in the box. All of this, like this, towards what that way? Oh, Raj. Here, let me lift out of there. Sorry. Down, yeah, and then like point down into the box, like that. Raj. in it. Raj. Yeah. Okay. There's one B, so what? In B? Yep. In B? yep. <sighs> Stick it there. <laughs> Turn more in the same direction. I'm gonna index there. Okay. Okay. So open my fingers now. Okay. So I just don't wanna get my fist stuck in the box, yeah? <laughs> Raj. Okay. You're doing good. Okay. So I have like opened the jaws, you know, and it sank a little bit, you see that? And I'm gonna close the jaws again so that I could pull out. Okay, I, it's just I can't see how open they are or not. Okay, I'm ready to come back out. I'm, I'm open on the jaws. Nice. Stay in there. 
Open all the way, Raj. Oh. Roger. Yes. Now close them and come out, or leave them open and come out? Open. Yeah. Just tighten them a little bit, or, or nudge it. OK, just pull it out. Just pull out. OK, sorry, that fell into F. That's, That's okay. OK. I'm watching. Get. Get in the box. Sorry, I sounded like Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. Coming out. Yay. All right. Nice job. What's going on? Sorry. Yeah. Get in there. <laughs> Come on, wiggle down there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Raj. So. Thanks for letting me do that. Yeah, yeah. of course. All right. So back row, uh, as we saw before on that contour, lateraling along the contour, there wasn't much life. Do you guys just want to go across from waypoint two to waypoint three direct line instead of going along the contour? Uh, yes. Great. Yep, that'll give us uh, some new things to uh, uh, take a look at. Yeah, sure uh, thing. Get us more directly there, a little, a little bit faster. So yeah, nice work, pilots. Yeah, mm -hmm. great job, nice everyone. And thanks, Thank front you. row, for letting us do that that's why we're here <laughs> and just so you know all that stress was worth it Steve Oscovich is saying whichever Norella species it turns out to be it will likely be a substantial depth or range expansion or oh. possibly even a new species Ooh. I love that I'm just over here like breathe <laughs> <laughs> okay all right let's get a ship moving and let's get going sounds like a plan so would you like to go back same to east no they want to just go directly go there direct to waypoint three uh we're going direct to waypoint three do not uh pass go do not collect two hundred dollars if there is two hundred dollars yeah, on the way you should definitely collect it <laughs> <laughs> i think we have an open sample box for that <laughs> Just slurp it, right? Yeah, put it in the slurp. Yeah, slurp it. <laughs> um, I think everybody five saw five? that, but five, five, uh, five, Dr. Jeremy Raise Horowitz. Snap. Next move, zero five five fifty meters. Dr. Jeremy Horowitz asks us to keep an eye open for abyssopathies, and we have a picture of it in the uh, science chat. Sounds good. That is going to be hard to see with all this sediment. Mm. Yeah, and with our scaling issues with um, for those how of you much we've been thrown off by the rocks. At home, if you want to help us look, it is uh, it would be uh, in the guide under. Uh, black corals and Schizopathidae abyssopathies species. The image we're using is from the Lion Islands. And it's also on the Chris Kelly wish list. Oh, I did not know. Yeah. Okay, we will be on the lookout for that. But it's very uh, kind of transparent -y white with a clear with the black skeleton visible. Okay, we've seen a few things that are a little wispy and hard to spot up on top of the ridges. So I think once we get back on top, um, it, that's where we've been seeing some of the other uh, black corals. And so let's keep sharp eyes out on that. All right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> nice work, guys. Yeah. I was kind of stressing about backing up there, but um, I've got I think we made some biologists happy. Adrenaline in my arms. <laughs> you, <laughs> did, you did an awesome job. It's like really precious stuff, right? And you don't want to like 
Yeah. Yeah. You just want to be very delicate about it, and then like you, once you have it, then you want to like actually keep it. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, uh, you, glad, you did really glad, well. Glad we got some sample for you. <laughs> just really helped me with the perspective of something like that in yeah. a bio box. I've done I've done like gen gentle things that um, I don't think gentle, but like I've done precious things like that that we slurped, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, which is a little bit more like not. E easy but like yeah like a little bit just line it up with the slurp and um that you can almost see it pulling through the slurp before you let go so you're like okay i know it's gonna go that direction <sighs> yeah so i just feel a little <laughs> like because the jaws in my mind they open so wide too right so i just have this thing in my head where i'm like it's cool it's great once you get it in the box but then you don't want to get stuck in the box with it right and then like <laughs> pull it out or smoosh it while it's while you're doing that so and you can't I can't you can see it sort of it's that raccoon problem what's that <laughs> uh so yeah it's like uh supposedly you can trap a raccoon by um uh like uh putting putting some sort of a snack or something in a in a box that has a hole just big enough for it to stick its paw into but once it grabs the thing it makes that fist and it can't get the uh, the paw oh, back out. Oh, Raj. Yes, okay. I didn't, I, I, it might be old lore. I don't know if that's true or not. No, but that makes sense. So totally like, like a, I, I can picture a raccoon <laughs> being like, but I want it. <laughs> <laughs> but I also want to, my hand. <laughs> yeah. It might be a good way to trap me, too. Put a snack in a box. <laughs> Val, do you want to make these ship moves uh, point three knots? Um, is that going to be feasible with the with the uh, payout? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Bridge, this is Nav. <laughs> Can we have this speed uh, zero point three knot, please? Still, occasionally see more of those glenasterids. Yeah. They're kind of fun little tiny guys to spot out. Justin, can you explain for our viewers where to find the guide to marine life that we're seeing? Oh, sure. So um, there are quite a number of them out there, but uh, one I, I was referring to is um, NOAA's, um, with, a, of course, a lot of people contributed to. So if you type in NOAA, N-O-A-A, -A, and Benthic, B-E-N-T-H-I-C, Animal ID, it should come up. It's the NOAA Benthic Animal ID Guide. Yeah, I do not trust these rocks. They look loose, and I know they're not. <laughs> <laughs> like, ferromanganese, I've decided, is the super glue of the sea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as somebody who works for Papa on Aomokuakea Marine National Monument, I'm excited also to see how the um, University of Hawaii Dark Lab Guide progresses because it's, uh, it's focused on observations within the monument but um, is drawing from all the different agencies and organizations uh, like Schmidt Ocean Institute, NOAA, OET, of course, us here, um, kind of combining all of those observations in one guide for the monument. If you're looking at the NOAA guide, it's, it's a broader um, expanse. So if you look in the upper left, you'll notice there's a little key uh, that talks about where the um, where the, the organism was observed. For example, the abyssopathies, it says P, L, and I, which is in the uh, Pacific, and the line islands, and then there's a depth key as well. Oh, there's, there's a, a fish. fish. <coughs> Bridging, this is Nav. Another move, zero five five fifty meters. I've been trying to figure out how to take advantage of all these amazing guides, but make them a little more accessible for, say, a middle school range. 
come in and put an activity that would be a little more introductory to some of these cool species and taking advantage of the video footage that's out there. Surprisingly steep terrain here. Yeah. Hmm. This is, looks like it's well past the angle of repose, <laughs> so I just know everything's like stuck. Asako says thanks, everyone. She's very, uh, she's very excited. You are welcome, Asako. Where's Asako based? Japan, I want to say. Let me look. I'm not sure where in Japan. Asako, where are you at? Asako's introduction. Japan. <laughs> Japan. What, what's your institution again? This is Asako. Can I use bubble cam? Thank you. Planetary Exploration Research Center. Oh, sneaky, you looked her up. <laughs> <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. I looked I looked it up before because I like to have a face to the name of who we're talking to. True, you know? that is a good idea. I looked, it, looked up earlier on the cruise. Yes. Yep. Ah, yes. Nice to meet you, Osako, officially. <laughs> Gauges are Gucci. Rather, Excellent. Weather is also Gucci. Yeah, it's been pretty calm yesterday and today, which we've been very much appreciating. Knock on wood. Yeah. Knock on vinyl, whatever we got. <laughs> Asako says, nice to meet you too, Kylie. Hey! <laughs> have I have question. internet friends. Sorry. <laughs> and a question coming in about how Hercules keeps its location coordinates. Does it have an uh, inertial, uh, sorry, inertial dead reckoning system? Mm. Uh, it has a DVL and a USBL. The DVL is a Doppler velocity logger, um, so that it works in sort of like a dead reckoning sort of way. Yep. And it has a four faces on it in a Janus configuration. Um, and it has beams basically that like contact the bottom um, uh, and reference where we, sorry, where we were with where we went. Um, and then it also has a USBL, which is, ultra oh, I just broke my clip. Ultra short oh no. baseline. Um, uh, which like pings to a transponder on the um, ship um, so it can reference itself to the ship as well as reference itself to past positions. Uh, question for back row. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so any word as to what the, the, the new poll or what, what the recovery time is now? Um, I know they're supposed to decide by 2 o'clock. Uh, nothing yet. Um, I'll go uh, radio lounge and see what's up. Yes, please. Thank you. I think for that flat plateau, maybe You're we should still point on point mute. do 0.4 knots if, we, if the back row is okay with that. 4 knots? 0.4. Uh, once we get here? Once we get there, yeah. Okay. Back row, would you... It, there might be recovering by eight. I'm sorry, can you say that again, Jess? Sorry? I think Jess is just discussing speed oh. and how stuff with Zoom on. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were calling on us. Oh, no, 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 sorry. No, sorry, I'm on a spiel, sorry. Yeah, um, I can. We can do data lab. Maybe they're down there planning. That'd be great. Thank you. Oh, you're not. Who called data lab? Oh. <laughs> Hello, data lab.
Eight. Raj. All right, front row. Um, they just updated the whiteboard, and we are uh, going to pull and be uh, back at eight. Roger. On deck at eight, Raj. So um, back row, we're thinking that we can push 0.4 knots, uh, increase our speed, see a little bit more, cover some terrain. Sounds like a good plan. OK. Appreciate this is enough. Bearing 0 0.55, 50 meters, uh, speed 0 0.4 knots. Affirmative. Thank you. Excellent. 0 0.55. Yep. Rod, rod. I think we have space for one more rock, so uh, down the line once we're cruising, uh, we'll keep an eye open if there's something that we can both trust and grab um, we'll go for it otherwise uh, we'll just see the sights roger that a question for front row uh, how do you manage the tension of the cables and tether uh, to the rov at that distance and depth um it's well Okay, so it's not really something I have control over, but it is something that there are parameters that are safe that we can work within. Um, and, and things that include that are like the, like that, that affect that are like the weather and like the ship movement, um, particularly like the heave of the ship. Um, and um, we have, up to a certain amount of tension that we can operate within, that we will operate within, um, and if and we monitor it, and if we see it getting spiky, um, we adjust our dive plan and um, reduce tension by paying in on the winch um, or otherwise halting the dive. I know, it's so tempting. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have another question. Uh, do we have a protocol or a procedure for what to do if the ROV is heavily damaged by a marine animal? If there is damage to the vehicle, um, we would recover the vehicle. And there's general, like, standard operating procedure for for that situation. I just think the lights and the sound and the vibration of of um, her make it so that larger marine mammals don't really want to come around it. We do have video of a juvenile sperm whale, I think, checking out her on descent one mm -hmm. time. So it sounds like our revised plan is to make this a 12 hour dive, correct? Uh, correct. So we will be back on deck at uh, 8 o'clock HST tonight. So when we do dinner relief, it'll probably be blue water? Mm. Probably. Um, probably. Um, let me double check the uh, expected ascent time. We have to come off at 4.30 or something? Something mm -hmm. like that, yeah. Oof, it'll be Lord. 220 minutes to the surface. Wow. I gotta yeah. assume that's this generous. I gotta assume that's a seabed. We slow down, you know? Yep. So, so that's a, almost not four hours, three and a half Bridge, this hours, is nap. Yeah, Another hours. move, same step. So, so yes, dinner relief will be about blue water. Sounds good. Thank 
get our stories ready. <laughs> So probably, we'll, probably by the end of this of our shift, we'll have to, they'll have to make the call, call the dive after about 20 minutes or so. Yep. One of our viewers pointed out it took us 52 minutes to do that backtrack and catch up to where we were again. It didn't feel as long, but yeah, Jess was <laughs> spot on with that. Yep. Yeah. I trust Justin and Kylie with their estimates on these things. They, uh, hey, they, they know the ops better than I do, so they, they have a pretty good sense of um, uh, what sorts of uh, what sorts of time needs to be budgeted for these things. It's cool to be included in things that, that reference you and like your expertise, because like when I started, I was just like a little intern, and you were already doing this for so long, you know. And I've grown. Mm. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it's just crazy how life is, you know. <laughs> yes. We're all part of this decision-making process. I and mean, I started as an intern here too, so it's wild. Yeah. We've we've come so far. <laughs> so we are a Herc pilot, you know. My first time on a ship, I was a student. What? Yeah. yeah. We're all so 